Rook takes, defends the bishop, yeah. Bishop e4, I think, and then f5 to cement it. Oh, but is he missing something? Knight g4 check, don't get mated. Don't get mated, that's always good advice, man. Always good advice. One second, this, don't flag, it's basically... If this white king comes to g3. King f4, four. Uh oh He's gonna do his own dirty work, but... Uh, and it's over. Oh, Rook he did it. And, he did and it. The and now he's, uh... Oh, man, in the chat... And we are live with the Junior Speed Chess Championship, brought to you by ChessKid.com. The man next to me, well known at ChessKid.com, and in all of these matches, International Master David Pruis. We got more IM on IM action today, David. Yeah. Magsudlu, Serana, it's on. Yeah. You ready? Exciting. Exciting. They played what? great in the in the uh, in their first round. Uh, so excited to see who comes out on top today. Yeah, and you mentioned the first round. Let's uh, move to our bracket and remind everybody of how these guys got here. As you can see, Mug Sulu. Well, he uh, he did he did his thing against Luca Moroni, the talented Italian. He moved yeah, on he by got a score the of biggest score of the first round, right? Yeah, biggest score. Yeah, and then uh, a much closer match, getting by the young his young countryman Andre Esipenko. But Alexi Serrano does get the job done by 15 to 12. And this is where we're at in the quarterfinals. Let's preview a little bit about what our smarter chess prediction says about these players. No, we're going to go right into games because we're late. Um, <laughs> cool. I'm, I, I, think, I think we're ready. We know these players are ready. We appreciate their patience. Uh, Magsulu and Serana have been kind of chilling. They've been snacking, David, snacking it up. Did you get your breakfast no, in? I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Um, Aaron did in like one minute what he said might take eight. So Yeah, but yeah, the good I'll, thing is, I'll unlike the original death matches that you and I did, we have more scheduled breaks in these, right? So you'll have time for maybe a cliff bar or something. Nice, nice. You know? My entire preparation so far was just putting on a shirt. So that's all yeah, I had. That, that's all you and, and, and yeah. getting the kids taken care of. So, all right, yeah. well, the games are set to begin. We are ready for them to, to throw down. You see the smarter chess predictions right there, everybody. David, let's talk a little bit about that because the, the, the match prediction, the probability of this is is much closer than, than, than some of these first round matchups were. I know it says 65 to 35, but that's really mm -hmm. actually as uh, close to a coin flip in terms of how we kind of look at some of these time controls. I mean, Magsulu is the slight favorite in each portion by right. about a game. Uh, what yeah. do you think when you look at that? Yeah, I mean, I think um, for someone who hasn't studied probabilities, it may seem a little confusing when it's like predicting, you know, that you're going to win a segment by like one point. Right. Um, and then you see 65% chance of winning the match. You're like, it's blitz. Anything could happen, right? But, right. Um, but yeah, I think if you're favored by like one point here, one point there, you're they're playing so many games that basically you're expecting that that small advantage to play out. That's a, that's a great point. It's funny you said we were literally just talking about that off air before you joined the uh, the the call, the prep. Arn and I were talking about how again a lot of times these statistics first come out, and Robert and I, as chess Robert Hess, uh, talked you know say like, hey, that just seems like a way too high advantage and all this stuff. But if you actually go time control by time control and see like, look, it's like a game here, maybe two games there, but in the end that adds up, right? And it also shows why sometimes they can be wrong because a mouse slip here, a blunder in time pressure there, and all of a sudden you're really at 50-50. So um, it's funny you say that because we were literally just talking about how probabilities can kind of be misleading to the eye but are actually a lot of times more accurate than people think. Yeah, yeah, definitely definitely accurate. And I think I think that prediction is pretty uh, it's pretty smart today. Yeah. So Ron has got a, uh, a palm tree there, an HB43 coming in with his – his pregame donation. For those of you who don't know, I don't even know who HB43 is on Twitch because it's not a username. He, he makes that donation via Streamlabs. Whoever you are, we love you and appreciate you. <laughs> he, he donates, David, he donates 5 or $10 before every show. It's just what he does. It's kind of like show. every yeah. show. Every show. Nice. Like, you got to run more shows and you'll be rolling in money. Right. Every single show. So, um, although it's kind of constant now, the, the chess.com events, isn't it? Yeah. No, we, you know, you're right. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty much on all the time. All right, well, I think Serrano's done a good job with this opening. What do you think? Yeah, I was just about to say, we've got we've got a position that I feel like we saw a lot of King's Indian attacks employed by Mog Sulu in his first round. Um, and, and so that structure didn't surprise me. But looking at Serrano's position, obviously this bishop on d3 is is nasty, as my son would say. He dubs <laughs> his own Nash, nasty. He's like, man, that was nasty. I'm like, well, that sounded narcissistic to say nasty. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> but uh, I Not guess I just coining new words with his own name. That's yeah, that's intense. But that bishop on d3 is nasty. What do you think? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, I don't think it's like 
you know, like Black's going to win because of it or anything like that. But I think it yep. shows that Black's kind of solved his opening problems pretty, pretty decently. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't have known what to do if I, if I'd been faced with this a three C three B four Kings Indian, uh, I went just off the top of my head, know what to do. And it looks like, uh, Serana did. So yeah, props. So now the question becomes, are you trying to, to sink that Bishop in there with a move like pawn C four at some point, obviously, yeah. I, I say obviously, I don't think you can do it right away because the knight on d2 can take it, although there there may be some tactics with this battery of the queen and rook sort of looming. Yeah, he seems to be calculating something, but I certainly don't see it. So the other approach is to bring a knight to e5. Yeah. And I was I was looking between knight d7 and knight g4 once I couldn't see any tactics around c4. Maybe Robert would have. Hey, Robert Robert would see a lot of things, you know, that you and I don't see. But you know, he'd also make some jokes that we wouldn't make either. You know, I don't I don't yeah. make any awkward jokes. Um, nothing awkward. <laughs> nothing awkward about this show. All right, I, I like your plan though. Ninety five. Now there's obviously a threat of C four that's a little bit stronger and hard to stop. Um, I'm gonna guess Black actually plays that move before retreating the knight. Yep, Serrano oh, yeah. does. If Queen A two, the knight will have to go to D seven instead of C six probably. But uh, yeah, he's got this. He's got yeah, this covered, and with that bishop entombed on b2, maybe he can start thinking about taking over an advantage in this first game. No, I, I totally agree. I was just going to say the queen on a2 is uh, not usually where you prefer your most powerful piece. Um, and as you highlighted, the bishop on b2 also also kind of a big frank and pawn stuck behind this. I, I'm loving Black's yeah. position here, and, and I think Mogsudlu is taking a long think maybe to try to justify a move like queen a4 or queen d1 wow he goes yeah. right into the face of danger on the d file i think it's i think the time was well used because he wanted to keep his queen centralized like you said if she's on a2 it's like one of those fisher random situations where like your yeah. queen is just so badly placed it's a major problem for your whole game um so he really wanted to play queen d1 onto the d file and there must have been several details that he that he wanted to be sure of before he went there yeah and he played he played e5 to to now open up the bishop on on g2 but there's there's consequences here like the king is wide <gasps> open and i was just going to say like oh. i was i was thinking of b5 and queen b6 but i was going to highlight that the reason is because those pawns couldn't go backward um and and this is the more brute force way to do it right just sacrifice mm. your way to the dark squares yeah i like this i like this um this version of consequences huh <laughs> yeah and you know <laughs> this is I great think, because uh, you highlighted the queen on d1, the knight on d2. In fact, the bishop on b2 is so out of play, it's not even like black is down a piece here, right? I mean, that's a great idea to just make play about the king side and expose that that bishop on b2 is not playing. Right. He's got three pawns against the knight, which might be sort of like a complicated material imbalance you could make a video about. Yeah. But if you factor in that bishop on b2, then it starts to seem like, well, he must have a bit of an advantage. Um, so now... I guess um, Max Sudlu has sacrificed an exchange back um, yeah. to be able to reorganize his pieces quickly with bishop c1, bishop g5. He's going to go for a kingside attack because and, now and it's actually he's Serrano the with the material to, advantage. Eliminating the knight to immediately try to bring the rook in on d2 maybe. Um, mm -hmm. Which... So, so I get nervous if I'm black here because I feel like if my attack fails, I've left my opponent with the two bishops, right? And if that bishop does find its way from c1 over to f4, maybe even h6, like there's always that potential that the two bishops can outplay the rook. Although Weird I'm sure computers... on the recapture here, Danny. Yeah, because I guess the biggest issue is it's just there's concrete problems happening before the bishops can coordinate, right? How do you, how do you take back on e4? I would just take back with the queen without thinking. So this is interesting that... Magsulu's taking a think here. Magsulu's really thinking about lifting the rook up here, um, which would definitely leave some back rank stuff for his king. H2 is even covered by the black queen at the moment. I I'm shocked how much time is going into this. I mean, time's pretty valuable down here when you're under yeah, two minutes. Yeah, what, seriously. What's the threat? What's the idea? What are we What are we missing? I, maybe he doesn't want to give up the G3 square as part of it. He's maybe worried about the queen on C7. Right. Entering and like queen e4, queen g3, bishop c1, and then is there something scary that black can do? Yeah, well, if you e1. go bishop c1 right away, maybe the c3 pawn falls. Queen takes um, c3, cheeky. But the c4 pawn would be a good way for black to uh, distract white from checkmating him. Yeah, I agree. And that's the kind of counterplay you need in, in balance like this, as uh, David 
said earlier would be would be good for a video where you have this often that the trap here everyone is you don't want to get too greedy okay we're, we're seeing that movie talked about maybe that's why he was thinking but you have to be very careful when it comes to getting greedy about pawns when really the most important thing in an unbalanced like rook versus miners is just who has the initiative and who has threats yeah um, okay rook f1 played this is definitely scary i mean i would sort of guess the black's okay with the computer maybe even winning but like i feel like either player could lose this game depending yeah i agree depending how they play here i see possible disasters in all directions bishop goes to c1 this is kind of what we were i mean we as in the collective we yeah, i was worried about that. i was worried that this would be the kind of thing that makes you regret um the two bishops but but okay, I think bishop e3 played to prevent the queens from coming off the board with a check, yeah. everyone. And... Queen d4 at this point is just way too much. Four, yep. four pawns. So Some yeah, these... he's going to get a temp on d3 and start pushing the c-pawn. Well, yeah, not yet. Is... <laughs> Got to wait a step it there. It looks like a position where computers are so much more comfortable playing black like as a human i'm night I'm, I'm having nightmares all the time about what the bishops can do to me on diagonals and just having yeah. so many bad experiences but black I'm has a ton of pawns three h5 rook c4 a c3 h5 rook c4 i love that there's queen b8 check at the end of the line but black just has yeah. rook d8 i guess okay okay i like i like your move c3 right push him baby what are yeah, we I mean, if for? we don't do something, I would not be able to defend the king side long term myself in a blitz game. I can't just cover everything those bishops do forever, right? There's bishop e4 yep. coming as well as h5. But so. I, I love the I love the c pawn getting going because then you get in the realm of those positions where you can start even sacrificing for things like the rook on f1 and get a queen on c1. Okay, it's totally yeah. abstract at this point, but that powerful c pawn is going to cause white all kinds of headaches. And look at the time. First time we've mentioned it, but I think that that may become a factor here. Yeah. Parham under serious time pressure. Yeah. And by the way, if if he loses this game somehow where he's got 20 seconds and I expect Rook C4 and I'm wrong, if he loses <laughs> this game somehow, it'll be the first time he's ever been behind in That's a right. match. Right? He, he first led that so, so strongly. And, uh, not not with us today, uh, Grandmaster Robert Hess, who we've already mentioned. He 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 told me several times that he, he thinks Alexi Serrana is a dark horse a dark horse pick to, to get to the finals on that side of the bracket. Um, hey, Danny, you mentioned queen takes F1 to try and promote the C pawn, but you know what I'm looking at now? I'm looking at the idea of C2 threatening queen takes E3. Right, same idea. To... Stopping our pawn, and then we bring the rook down to D1. Yeah, I like it. No, this is this is getting really tricky now for Mog Sulu. I think that an accurate move like G4, I Wants was going to say, G4. followed by C2, This is I think this is over. So the David's threat here idea of, literally is queen takes e3, I think. Yeah, and, and, and white, the white from the queen. prevents that. I'm going to show that real quick on the analysis board in terms of why that was a threat. Um, <sighs> Serrano's move. looking confident playing g3 quickly there. Can he come around and, like, mate him with his queen on h4? You know you want to. You know you want to mate him. Oh, that's, that's Look at it. that. Sick. Coming to h2. I didn't have time to throw on the analysis board. My fault on that. That's um, fine. He's got rook d1 now. He's just like nailed It's just there. over. Par, par, oh. par resigns. And and wow, game one. So as we said, I mean, Alexi Serrana, the, the lower seed in the bracket, but a lot of people um, like Robert Hess, who uh, was on record saying he really sees this as uh, as a as a very very close match. Magsulu, of course, for those of you who don't know, is the reigning world junior champion, uh, the the second highest rated junior in Iran. Obviously, the chess.com community, David, I think, is a little more familiar with his countryman Ali Reza Faruja, right, for his bullet prowess. Sure, but, but I mean, but they're they should be mentioned in the same breath every time. Totally. I think. I mean, their ratings are almost the same in in Fide and in Blitz and Bullet. I mean. And he's only 18. He's a couple years older than than Ali Reza, and and as we've said, he's the reigning world junior champion. But Alexei Serrana is the one who just struck there. Let's remind everybody who that is, right? The young Russian Robert Hess's dark horse pick to make it out of that side of the bracket um, and play either maybe Wei Yi or Ali Reza Faruja in the finals. Again, I'm I'm speaking for Robert, who's not here, but I know that a lot of people look at this as a uh, as a big moment there. We've yeah. got. We've got interesting facts about Saran is that he plays for the Australia Kangaroos. Um, yep. And yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's uh, scored 4-0 against the San Francisco Mechanics, so I'm very aware of that yeah. 
job of his. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, somebody in the Pacific Division who manages a team is used to that frustration, right? Yeah. Um, the uh, shout out to all of our chats. We've seen some subs coming in. We thank you for the love. The chats are active on both on both platforms. Chess TV, loving those new emotes and flair they got. And uh, Diamond member Fuggy Color earlier said that he likes how Saran and Mogsulu are much more relaxed and kind of focused. They look like they're just chilling, whereas Wei Yi and and I agree with him. Wei, Wei Yi yesterday looked like he was just totally asleep. Saran is smiling at his position, dude. He's yeah. just like, he's I'm just happy, happy smile. right now. He's like, this is plus point one. I plus love point where one, my pieces are, <laughs> and I just won game one. So he's feeling it, despite how ugly that wall play, wallpaper is. He his chest is not ugly today. I mean, look yeah. at you. You got a nice, clean wall, David. That's much more modern and sleek. You know, that wallpaper, yeah. I don't know, Stranger Things yeah. called, right? Oh, but I don't want any skeletons coming out of the closet. Yeah, they want their monster coming out of that wallpaper again. There you go. Oh, you're cut. You're shutting your closet. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, back, back to – I love it. Back to the chess. Um, try, to, try to keep that quiet, you know. The, uh, the A6 pawn is falling, but black has B4, so look for – Serana to deal with that threat first, everybody. Something like Slash queen e2, sack perhaps. It. <laughs> You're gonna what? No, he's not gonna sack. I said you said look for him to deal with that what? threat, and I said slash sack it. You know, just let black play b4 for no reason. Well, he sacked a piece last game. If you're just joining <laughs> yeah. us, Serana, obviously up a game. He just won in an excellent fashion with the black pieces, and uh, is already much better as white. So. And that was a really like relaxed piece sack last game too. It was like whatever, have this. I'm not worried. I'm not making a threat, but yep. I know I got this. So queen b6 is played. I'm looking at 95 now for white. I'm loving Serrano's position. Um, okay, he plays knight e2. I guess he wants knight f4. Kind yeah, of a slower approach. Looking at the light squares, this h6 move from black, which is frequently played to deal with the bishop on the g5 e7 diagonal, mm -hmm. Whoa. it slightly weakens the light squares. So now g5 to keep the knight out of f4. Yeah. It and the tactic here to show on the analysis board that uh, Mogsudlu is taking advantage of is that if white takes e4, when black takes, there's a double attack on the queen and the knight on f3. But yeah. the thing is, it may not even be so simple. There's moves like d5 and a whole lot of pieces falling. Probably right. black take, gets take, the best take. of that. Two minors, rooks on f1 yep. and c8. But yeah, it'll come out in black's favor. Okay. So that means white cool. has to deal with knight e4 in a different way than capturing, likely. Um Rook F C one comes to mind. Even even a move like Rook A two. I mean, as as slow as this is to try to maybe double rooks on the A file. Okay, but he's played knight to C three instead. Yeah. That that he's tells me something maybe went wrong for White in the plan, David. The knight went to E two and now it's back on C three. Well, I mean, it it was going to F four. Black had had to or chose to play G five to deal with yeah. it. Then it okay, goes in fair. another direction. So it's not necessarily. Not necessarily no, the addition that something went wrong. No, that's a great point. And let me analyze that because David just made a great point about, you know, just how sometimes these positions evolve and strong players have to let the plan evolve based on how their opponent reacts. So white played knight e2, as David was saying, with the idea of knight f4, taking advantage of the light square bishop, sort of force black's hand into a move like g5, which is now a move that you can never get back, right? Despite the chess.com bugs, you can't move pawns backwards. And after bishop g3, knight e4. So I guess, I, you know, I think that's a fair point. The knight comes back. White is sort of pivoting based on the fact that black has now made weaknesses that he can't undo. Yeah. And I think that's a good point, right? We always talk to our students about that, just sort of allowing your advantage to evolve, not getting married to an idea. And, and that's – I still like white regardless. So at 95, I like that move. Yeah, it's complicated. I mean, there's factors in, in, in both sides' favor. I mean – Parham's done a good job of controlling the C4 square and C file. I mean, his main problem is just those kingside weaknesses, which could show up later on. But for the moment, everything in the center and the queen side, he's got, he's got covered. I think some people may have been wondering last move whether Serana might go after the A pawn with rook A2, rook to A1. Uh -huh. I but was it's wondering very convenient that. for Parham to play rook C6, you know, back when he had his knight on D7 and White's knight okay. was on F3. Convenient to play rook c6 and rook fc8. And so I yeah. think Saranda correctly judged that the c file was going to be more important than trying to go after that a pawn, even though it looks like a classic backward pawn you'd want to attack. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I'm wondering if how White nice. is considering deal. Oh, I like this move, right? Look yeah. at him flipping the script, recognizing weaknesses that can't be fixed. 
on yeah. the king side. And I was going to say, I w I'm wondering how you're going to deal with the knight on e4, because as long as the queen was on b3, you were never thrilled about capturing due to the discovery. And but this move maybe answers that. Yeah. Now, now there's now there's opportunities to consider taking on e4 at some point. Um, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure. Let's see. I'm sure these guys are calculating. I'm not sure they're calculating. I'm positive they're calculating yeah. at a higher level than me, but. Um, curious how you want to approach this position if you're if you're really interested in taking advantage of black's overextended pawns i think you have to get rid of that knight on e4 if you want to play a move like h4 david right if you, if you play h4 now playing h4 and allowing knight g3 danny you like that i'm considering it i'm okay, considering well, you're going full alpha zero today somebody's got their coffee in them, but you don't even drink coffee nope. nope no no that's me oh wow okay um well this move is surprising no, I I like I feel like this is a better approach because now H4 is a threat without the the potential risk of the double pawns taking on G3 and that's that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to get rid of that knight so that I can play H4 and try to pry open these these kingside pawns. It's a very interesting approach to me. I mean, he chose to sort of like block the C file with that bishop on C2. Like everything he did was just to play H4, right, Danny? I mean, like plan. there's yeah. no advantage gained on the queen side with these trades. No, you're right, and it is. It's it's all risky, and and maybe Black just calls his bluff and plays f5 here, right? With threats of f4. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know, mean, if so... White had played Queen g4, attacking that e pawn, I'm I'm certain Black's plan was to try and roll with f5. So here against h4, he should also consider f5. He's basically got to consider how he'll defend against hg hg queen h5. Right. Hg hg queen h5. Who's I'll cover analyze the it. Square. And maybe there's f4 at the end of it. Yeah. Hi, Aaron. I was just caught on camera that I was waving to you. So I'm just going <laughs> to say hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> uh, next time I'm off camera, I'm going to let you know something. Just so that, that everyone knows what's going on. Although apparently it leads to bits and cheers. People love it. Shout out to all the right. Twitch chat. We love you. We see all That's the regulars fine. in there. We got coffee. We got Bay. We got Muscatel87 with the bits. And hey, look. I'm going to say something to Oren, everybody. Yeah. Yep. Wow. This is so much fun. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, I think Serrano's doing a great job this game, man. Yep. Bishop d6, that made sense. Um, Avoiding Bishop d6, that F4. Rook f6. Here comes. By the way, the moves we've been predicting are happening, despite the crazy shenanigans we're we're dealing with here on the yeah. on the tech side of this production. Welcome to the Junior yep. Speed Chess Championship. I almost wanted to say welcome to the M&M Show. That's how it felt. <laughs> All right. So Black is going to be thinking about Bishop e5 and Queen h7 here. Yeah, um, and there's mate threats on h1, and that's. Uh, but okay, what happens? I think right? White's going to throw in Bishop takes c4 check. You have to. Five, right? But maybe he needed to play bishop c4 check before <gasps> taking on e5, right? Dude. Because now black doesn't have to recapture. Oh, that is awesome. Right? So on bishop takes e5, I thought maybe bishop c4 check right away there. Um, okay, although let's maybe analyze he would that. still go king h8, but... So you're saying you in this it. position, white should have played check first. Maybe so. Okay, but if we're looking at the at the live position here, analyzing what... To show everybody the threat. The whole point is the mate on h1 is hard to stop. Now Mogsulu smiling. Oh, yeah. That's a big teddy bear big teddy bear smile right there. Yeah, he Love likes that. that. I mean, if white plays <laughs> like f4 to get out of mate, then rook h1 and rook d1 is good enough to win for black as well. Yeah, so he runs. That means the queen is falling, right? Yeah. Olympus oh, is falling. But at the end, he thinks black can't take his bishop because of rook h1. Oh, rook h1 winning the queen back. But the thing is, on f3, there's takes ef3 check. There's queen h2 check. Yeah, Magsulu is clearly clearly happy with this position, or he wouldn't be going full Hikaru. Never go oh, full yeah. Hikaru, but he's getting close right now. He's got rook d8 check to trade everything off and get the bishop on c4. H1's yeah, not and, control. And Black That's should be resigns. Winning. That's resigns. What? He's still playing. I'm shocked. Yeah, I, I think Serrano will resign here in a moment. Unless, unless is this is this our first sign of maybe match strategy, David? We talked a lot about this yesterday in regards to the players assessing if they feel they're better as the time control gets faster. How often do you want to play these types of games out, right? Because you can get a whole other minute or two off the clock here. I suppose. Wow. Mogsulu kind of bouncing. He's like, what are you doing here, right? Like I said, yeah. going 
go and head Bob Hikaru. But um, he's like, okay, if you if if you like this, but I'd be resigning. And, and if I had to vote, I mean, wouldn't a lot of us say that Mugsulu might be the 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 favorite in bullet? I mean, I guess I think of Mugsulu as a bullet specialist on our site. I admit I don't know. I don't know everything. I mean, about about how late these guys play bullet at, in the night, but um, but I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm a little surprised by that. The fact that he played that out, maybe just get the nerves out. Well, here's 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 one crazy thing about how close this match is, Danny. Yep. Okay, um, their bullet ratings are ten points apart, eight points apart. Twenty eight forty five for Mike Sudlu, twenty eight thirty seven for Serana. Okay, their blitz ratings. Also, seven points apart, Danny. Yeah. So no, this is a very, in both very phases close match. Of the match. Yep. The chess.com ratings say it's going to be pretty close. <laughs> yep. Well, and and that's kind of what our smarter chess prediction said, everybody. If you're just joining us, I mean, okay, a 65% favorite for Mog Sulu is not as high as it seems. It's just when you go segment by segment and you give a game here and a game there to who we, you know, we maybe are anticipating as the favorite. That's kind of what it works out to, but. But I don't know. I mean, right now I'm uh, we're seeing we're seeing pretty equal chess. That game got away from uh, Serana, and unlike yesterday's match, David, where we had five straight wins for White before Black struck, the opposite yeah. here. Black has won both first games of the match. Yeah, and uh, has another successful opening. <laughs> I think. I mean, not sure what what would be wrong for Black here. Maybe he has to get the bishop off c8 before we say that. She's trying to sink another piece into D3, Danny. <laughs> he likes that square, apparently. Work the first game. Let's run yeah. it again. So we're going to see a quick F3 challenging his center before D3 becomes an issue. But uh, maybe maybe Saran is willing to play F5 here. Probably he is, right? He's, well, it's, he's pretty and, confident. And there's also this idea of bishop G4 and the F3 square. Yeah. Um, inviting a party and and i i really like that idea of uh, maybe f5 eventually comes but if you get bishop g4 queen d7 you know you start infiltrating in on some of these light squares well i was just thinking that mike sulu will play f3 here in which case or f4 right and force the en passant yeah which is an interesting thing we, we talk about that with psychology a lot right sometimes when you want your opponent to take you play f4 because you're people like, like i to don't do want things. you to take right <laughs> if they if they uh People like to do things they don't get a chance to do very often, right? Yeah, do you have to do and, that with uh, your kids to get them to do something? Same yeah, exactly. Thing. You have to be like, Dad doesn't want you to brush teeth. They're like, I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Diamond member Fuggy Color, I don't know why you're singing Justin Bieber. You can continue, man, but uh, that's the last shout-out you're getting for it, buddy. Um, All right, the bishop's off C8, so I'm officially declaring this a successful opening for Black. Yeah, I mean, again, Black has been... Black has been in charge. I like the queen coming to d7. Mm -hmm. Pretty Me pretty too. natural move. Yeah, put the queen on the color of the squares of the bishops that have been traded. That was like that was like oddly prophetic right there by you. Yeah. You should consider teaching chess. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. you've ever thought this about that. This is an that. old lesson of mine, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have to review it. <laughs> put the queen on the color complex where your opponent lacks a bishop. But seriously, little yeah. little educational nuggets you get. Take that, Robert Hess. Yeah. Take that. You know what a lot of people would do here, too, is black is play h5, h4. Do the little, like, gain a little space, poke at your h2, g3, see yeah. if the white king really has enough pawn cover or if he's not so sure. Yep. I like that. I like it a lot. Uh, Magsulu, again, going into a bit of a think tank. And uh, if you're just joining us, the storyline has kind of been uh, black black in control, equalizing easily out of the opening. And, and both games have uh, have been won by black to start. This beautiful knight on d4 has got, like, nowhere to go, Danny. I mean, for a guy who's on a central outpost, like, living the dream, and then he's like, but what is the dream really for? <laughs> he gets existential and his thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> What's it all about? Yeah. Here I am, <laughs> sipping pina Queen. coladas on d4. I'm the envy of every other knight in the kingdom. Yep. And I don't know why I'm doing it. Look Can at this move, queen b5. I play rook takes e3. I know, dude. I was just thinking about tactics <laughs> on e3. I was like, he can't, he can't, not quite. I, I don't think you could do it, but I want to, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I, I want to make something nasty happen on e3. Parham, Parham's still bobbing the head, feeling a little relaxed, singing that Iranian pop music that we all know and love. Mm. 
This was a strong move, actually, queen b5. He's challenging that queen on the light squares, right? Yep. And trading queens will reduce white's problem of his king. Um, yep. Having just a little bit less cover, that may basically become irrelevant in endgame. But I promise you folks, if this had gone long as a middle game, you would have eventually seen that king be a problem. Yep. Well, um, you had just highlighted a really, a really good point. Let's let's analyze that. Just back up a couple moves and show that, you know, the point you were saying that Black's threats of h5 and h4 they were real, right? Those weren't made up. Um, and as you said, you get to h4, there there becomes threats of h3, there become threats of just blowing everything open. So, I think you're totally right. I mean, Queen b5 was just what the doctor ordered for White, and and now I expect him to just trade queens here on d7. Yeah, solved all his issues. Game looks basically dead equal after a queen trade, and then maybe knight b5, which is what he wanted to do anyway, trade the bishop on c3 that's yep. blocked, open the c-file, and uh, yeah, just don't fall for rook takes e3 <laughs> at any point. <laughs> Don't fall for rook takes e3. Don't fall for tactics on c3. It's one of those positions where you start smelling blood in the water with all the all the pressure on these points e3, the x-ray to c3 by the bishop on g7. But but there's nothing concrete, right? We're just we're just sort of seeing ghosts right now. Deep thinking to h3. I think this knight. I was gonna say wants to go to e4, but I was wrong. <laughs> Black Black's still kind of in in decent shape, right? What's up, yeah. real real Digimon? Hey, Danny. Hey, chat. Hey, you. Hey, you. Um, Knight coming to d3, David. We highlighted this from the previous game that it was it was something that Serana put his bishop on, and if you like it, you also put a knight on it. Yeah. So black black <laughs> is still in good shape, even if you didn't checkmate white. Was that was a little Rihanna from you, right, Danny? Uh, dude. First of all, did you purposely not know who that was, or are you just David Pruising me right now? Rihanna? I've, it's Beyonce, I've, I've dude. Of dude, Beyonce is rolling over as what? Nala and the new Beyonce. Lion King by Disney in theaters. There's a new Lion King? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Moving Did on. Did Simba die? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is like the story of our relationship 2.0. Yeah. I love it. All right. A3. Okay. I think the Black Bishop will go to F8. Uh, we still agree that Black is getting great openings, right? It's just, you know, didn't yeah. lead to a check. Ooh! D4. Yes. Yes. Pins everywhere. Where's my pin emote? The bishop on C3 was pinned, and so he forces his way <laughs> into tactics. Magsulu shakes his head. Discovered to 91. Yeah, Magsulu felt that one, Danny. That was that was not ahead, Bob. Yeah. Wrecked fire points out the rook on C2 looking sad. Absolutely agree. Um, okay, White has a little bit of compa dump here. Not not enough, I don't think, to... I think with double D pawns, it's not very good. I mean, isn't the yeah. one on D5 just dead? Like, he could have played Rook D7. He just wanted to get rid of the pin and sack the pawn and move his move a piece, yep. you know? He was yep. like, I want to move my bishop before I lose the game. Yep. People loving those pin emotes, both Chess TV and Twitch. Chat, wherever you're watching, thanks for being here. Give us a follow. Pawn follow down. down the rabbit hole. Man, Black's going to go 3-0. How long till White wins a game, Danny? You want to yep. take a... Little bet on that. So far, that'd be awesome. That's a that's a side bet. That's what Smarter Chess is missing. If he wants to make it to Vegas, we need prop bets. Mm -hmm. Like, will we get three black wins on a row in the same day that an NBA star trades team? Right. Why you start mixing genres and you make you know. That's how you get into the big money. All right, Rook D three. This looks great for Black. Yeah, but he had Rook E two to D two, Danny. That would have really left the bishop without anywhere to go. Look at the time, though. Are we surprised by how dominant Serana's been on the clock? Serana has been ahead on the clock. Even the game he lost, what? he kind of, like, blundered that Queen H7 idea, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think that's fair to say that he didn't quite see that coming. Totally, yeah, agreed. Um, but he was ahead on time before that happened. Um, so he's been looking very confident. Yeah, he's ahead on time. Right now, like, likely about to be ahead on the scoreboard with a victory here at the exchange. Parham shaking his head. I yeah. think that he points Ooh. out that a7 is probably not even worth the d2 pawn because Interesting. Yeah, and, and the white king agrees. So Serana takes advantage of that. Interesting. I thought he was going to put his rook on b5 to defend the b6 pawn from there. And, and the b6 pawn keeps white from playing bishop c5, right? So then you want to follow up with rook c4. 
that was a good idea. I, th I think that was, I think this is one of those positions where he's like, he's taking this like safe, like I'm just going to kind of squeeze this one out. I know I'm way up on the clock. Yeah, come to E3, get behind those. I thought D5 check worked for a second to win the Rook, forgot the Rook could take with check on D5, so. Oh yeah, that would have been. I need to take my bets, man. I get real excited for blunders that aren't real. <laughs> blunders that aren't even real. Is he going to H6? Rook H2. Bishop Rook, I was going to say, play Rook H2 first so and just trap mate the king. Him. Just mate him, man. Yeah. There you go. Just That's do it. The way. Just do it. Boom. Checkmate. That's some nice technique. And I think there's never been really a more appropriate time to share our our zero dash one emote on Twitch. Honestly, this is all black. This is all black all day right now. Yep. Switching it up. E4 from Serana. I think that's a little bit rare. Yeah. Um, I have uh, I have studied his games before, Danny. I think E4 is pretty rare from him. You know a lot about chess. I bet you know even more about grass. Mm, is that but, that's slang? That's a Starsky and Hutch reference. <laughs> something or other? <laughs> Starsky and Hutch reference. All right, Starsky sorry about that. And who? All right, I know, I know a lot about the Night Orb. You know that, and, and so do you. Yeah. You and I have both been open Sicilian players by trade. Yeah. Here we've got yeah. a rouser structure with taking on C6, and now you're already worried about tactics with F5 and E5. Um yeah. Bishop D3, you have to watch out in a lot of these positions. Actually, this is kind of odd. I think, I mean, I'm scared to criticize either of these players who are so much better than me, Danny. But can I, am I allowed to? Uh, dude, that's why you're here. <laughs> I think I think you don't normally want to trade on C6 in the open Sicilian when Black's got a bishop on D7. Yeah, that's the whole point is you leave that position awkward and or you only do it, usually like in these rouser structures, you do it when there's an immediate follow, like E5 it's or got, F5. Yeah, if you've got a tactic like knight D5 at the end, F5 at exactly, the end. Exactly, right? But in this position where he played knight takes C6, I feel like it's more like a position where knight to B3 would be the no, move. But let's mm -hmm. analyze that just to show the uh, the chat what we're talking about because you're making an instructive point, and I think we probably have a decent enough amount of Sicilian players to justify the time here. So yeah. the point David's saying is that one of the, the difficulties for black in this structure is the lack of space for these pieces. For example, the bishop on d7 is is kind of just there for defensive purposes. So when your opponent lacks space, very rarely do you want to trade. Bring that bishop to c6 where it pokes e4 and essentially give black the space that you now see Mog Sulu enjoying. If you look at the live position, it's a very comfortable position for black. So as David's saying, mm -hmm. like knight b3 makes sense. You know, you keep black in this sort of jumbled up pieces wrestling each other for squares. Um, and what I was saying is very often, the only time these sort of moves are coming is usually when there's an immediate tactic. David mentioned, you know, knight d5 tactics. Sometimes there's e5 tactics, which would justify eliminating that knight from guarding e5. So kind of mm -hmm. going on a tangent here to say that our criticism, I think, is, is fair, even though David politely asked permission first to criticize yeah. a 3,000 rated bull uh, bullets player <laughs> on chess.com. But but I, I totally agree with you. And, and I think that, uh, you know, black structure, very comfortable. So are we once again in a position where we're just evaluating that black is okay, apparently? Yeah. Black is okay. Yeah, and and my 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 overall point, if, I, if I'm right about knight c6 and knight b3, my overall point is I think a little bit of that not experience with e4 might have shown there. I mean, Serana, you know, not really being an e4 player, that seemed like a, a surprising, yeah, very, very just surprising a, kind of mistake it, to make for anyone who... Who does you know, it's funny, David, because like you said, these guys are obviously very good, right? And we yeah. wouldn't criticize them, but they're still they're young players and, and also trying to expand and improve on their repertoires all the time like anybody is. And and I think that, like you just said, I think you just highlighted on the analysis board just a little bit of lack of experience, right? That's just not a trade that White is normally. And just look at the way White handled the next set of moves. The bishop going back and forth, clearly kind of lacking a concrete plan and so the point is, you were right this time, buddy. It's okay that right. you gave criticism. <laughs> Shout out to DHarry47, who got my Snoop Dogg reference. You get a diamond membership. Message me on Twitter. Look at that. All you got to do is know I made a Snoop Dogg reference, and you get a diamond membership. One month. Chess.com. Dude, so these Hashtag. shows are basically like a I treasure know. hunt for the secret. I know, just a treasure hunt of, of hidden Danny knowledge. That's so cool. Speaking of which, we I want to thinking... catch one reference myself. <laughs> one <day. laughs> That's my ambition. <laughs> All right. Um, the uh, well, okay. I also don't like how Black played D five. I, I know. I was gonna say, did that whole rant we just went on is it backfiring on us? Because all of a sudden, White, this creative little rook, bring the other rook over. Yeah. 
Go full Larry Christensen on the queen side. Double rook lift. Yeah, I think basically by playing d5, Max Sudlu took like a good Sicilian and turned it into a bad French, which is something that like nobody would want to do, right? Dude, you're just you're so educational. And now I got to back up to the analysis board again. I'm Let's sorry. go back to d5 because right. you're right. That's... We keep going to the we keep going to the black to the board here. Cave. No, but it's a great point. D5 was played here, changing the structure after e5. Just all of a sudden, in a French position where you lack your good bishop in a French, you lack your dark square bishop that wants to come to this side of the board. And, and the structure just easily becomes one that favors white with this d4 square calling white's name. And we see that Serana immediately executed a plan to put a knight on it. Um, yeah. The, and he's know, doing so, what you want too, Danny. With rook d1, he was looking at the yeah. double rook lift that you were excited about. Uh-oh. So I, I agree. That was, um, that was an interesting thing to take a look at. Um, if he's already diamond, alarm. maybe he can gift it to somebody else. Knight check shadow. How about rook c3? Maybe trade a rook off. Why not? You've got the positional advantage. There's maybe G5 hanging at the end, depending how black plays rook C3. Yep, I like Why it. Why not just take something off? Rook C3. Is white just going to play B3 next? Take Kill. a rook off Serana. Right, he's going to take a rook off, play B3, which not only kicks the bishop, it guards C4 and A4 from this sort of awkward, suddenly awkward-looking knight on, on B6. Oh, yeah. There could so be a I, tactic here. These could I, be tactics. Yeah, actually, is that what he's thinking about? I'm looking at it again, and I'm like, wait a, hold a tick, hold the phone. The b6 knight is now loose, because when the queen moves, we have yeah. discoveries, everybody. Is knight f5 a move? Is knight c6 check even a move, David? I mean, Bueller, Bueller, can I get frisky? Yeah, knight c6 looks reasonable. He played queen e7, so at least g5 is defended. If rook c8, he can just take back with his rook. Right. So it, Queen E7 has another purpose too. It kind of stops B3 because of this A3 square being spied. Maybe it doesn't totally prevent it, but it is. It makes you question it, right? You got to be a little okay. careful about. Oh, right as I say that, right? Right. As you, this right. move stops B3. B3. That's like a facial. <laughs> Just in time for Danny the Donkey emote to be used, right? That made me look. That made me look like an ass. I think I can say that. That's PG now. So, yeah. Danny the Donkey. Yeah. Um. Okay, but King B2 should be followed likely. I think rook d1 to d3, maybe. b3 Dude. would be to, to be able to play rook d3 without allowing knight c4. I mean, he might want to play king b2 first, right? But I think his b3 move says he wants, he's obsessed with your double rook lift for some reason. I don't yet know yeah, exactly how. but I think how... it's less effective now. I think that, I mean, we liked it originally, or I right. did, and, and, and yeah. apparently he did too. But now that the pawn on b3 is, is cutting off squares of third right. rank mobility, I would... There's less if trickery I'm, to do on the on the yeah. B file or anything. If I'm white, I'm I'm playing King B two and I'm trying to sit on a bit of a space advantage, as you pointed out. Black kind of willingly took on a bad French structure, which sounds redundant because most Frenches are bad. But there you go. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, um, Fair enough. Yeah, X Magnus Carlson. I see you in the chess TV chat calling for Knight C six. I liked it too. I liked it too, but. Uh, not to be. Yeah. So, Danny, I've got a general question for you. I mean, these guys both have limited experience as as youngsters, right, in these uh, speed chess format. Yep. So they basically each have exactly one speed chess championship match to their and victory name. under their under their right. Name, yeah. And it's a victory for each of them. But here's the thing: um, Parham won his by like the biggest score, right? The biggest blowout of the first round. Right. Serana had one a of much the closest closer matches. score. Not, not the closest, but one of the closest. Right. Watch out for knight c4. But he had yep. a very close score. Um, I guess he'll still just take with his bishop. So, But um, there's knight takes e6 on the board, right? That's. Uh, but yeah. then there's knight a4. Oh, your move is good with knight a4. Look at that. Knight a4. Ooh. Right. To analyze it, let's show everybody what David's threatening here, everybody. The, the point is that white makes some random move. This is a serious threat. Not only hitting c3 hitting checkmate on b2, and you can't take it because the lady falls. This so time Serana saw it. This time he didn't slip into a checkmate tactic. All right, let's, let's like, go back to what happens here. But, it's like whoa. he got queen h7 once, but not again. So now knight a4 is like a blunder tactic because he can just take it, and his queen's covered by the knight. Right. So that was a big, that was a big purpose of knight f5, and... and 
In the meantime, of course, if you take f5, there's queen takes b6. That's kind of the main point here. Rook c5. Look at Parham. Remember, remember what happened in the first game? He was black, uh -oh. right? He created that h-file attack out of nothing, and is he about to do the same on the oh, a-file? God. If this knight moves off of f5 where it's now attacked, then knight a4 comes. For uh, the first uh -oh. time, oh, not for the first time in the match, but for the first time when it really seemed to count, uh, Magsulu is up on time. Um, oh, wait, no, he's not. My bad, no. I misread it. It's very He's not, close. but he's about to be because I yeah. think Saran just blundered this tactic. And he just can't find the solution. I don't see the solution. The threat is pawn takes knight. If the knight moves, there's knight a4 finishing the game. If the knight moves, there's knight a4. And that's what he's thinking about. Again, everybody, the point is if the knight moves, the queen lacks protection, yeah. and then knight a4. Serana just said that. He said there's no way. There's no and way out. Is he just losing the, the knight? Yeah. Right? Wow. Yeah. Rook c5 was such a strong move, just a yeah. straight up blunder. It's a great tactic. Great tactic. Yeah. Rook c5 is a move that just wins the game on the spot. It was weird because White sort of blundered in that tactic, right? Knight f5 yeah. was a little bit too fancy for his own good. Um, yeah. Okay, he's, he's going to try to make some tricks happen. But seriously, that prop bet we challenged you with chat a little Four bit ago. Black. How long will we go before White gets a victory? We're about to get our fourth win for Black in a row to start yeah. to start this match. Wow. Speaking a little prematurely, not over yet, and we do have time pressure about to ensue, but we're, we're going we're gonna to think that Black should get this one. I'm going to call it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, knight d7. He's down a knight against a world junior champion. Oh, and look at this maneuver. Pony likes e4, right? Oof. If you like it, then you go and put a pony on it, right? Yep. Who's saying that again, David? <laughs> yeah, I, and now this time I remember you said it was beyond Beyonce. Beyonce? <sighs> there you go, right. She's she's yeah. French. You speak French. So um, yeah, I don't know if you've ever so heard of someone named Beyonce. Who... Um, who put the knight on it? There's the rook hanging yeah. on h3. I would, I would, taking d3 is even better, yeah, and he does it. And uh, and there and you have it, right? We have our our fourth win as black in a row. You know what we have right now? Our first call to action for social media because it's time for the daily question. I love All being right. like Alex Trebek and being like, that's our daily double. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm ready for it. What's our question, Danny? In another hundred years, and this is cool because it's like sci-fi. You know, you watch you watch shows where they show some science fiction where some nine-year-old chess champion doesn't just come out of nowhere and get good, but comes out of nowhere and wins the world championship, right? So this is like science fiction. In another hundred years, nice. given that this is the Chess Kid Sponsored Junior Speech Chess Championship, we ask, how young will a world champion be capable of being. And remember how nobody could do a four minute mile, David, then one person did it and a ton of people did that it. That was me, Danny. I that remember. was you, but yeah, no, I know I'm giving you full credit. Like Usain Bolt, like, you know, starts breaking time thresholds and, and it yeah. changes the way people think things can be done. What yeah. will happen if, uh, if we end up getting somebody in another hundred years achieving grandmaster at the age of seven, at the age of eight, will we have a world champion before the age of 12? This is, well, uh, are you speaking it, of pure humans or of cyborgs? Because I think most most of our descendants will be cyborgs at that point. Are you asking about like a pure human that, champion? That's a great point, right? Done in a dusty room among the last ten people, or are you no, including I mean, cyborgs? A cyborg is probably most likely, and you know who will be who will be leading the way with the chip, right? And what kind of chip will we want? Will it be like an Alpha Zero chip or like a Stockfish chip? And what's the best chess playing chip, right? Dude, Serana so, took D3 again in like eight moves with black. What <laughs> what is up with that, Danny? No, this this repertoire has, has a few holes head, like, apparently. How, how could he <laughs> the same fool me three times? Shame on me. Yeah. Uh the real Greco diamond member along the tune of our daily question said, Well, L Leela, L C zero is only a year old, so touche. Mm -hmm. Good point, right? Yeah. Anyway, so uh we're gonna get back to the chess here, but get involved on social media, use the hashtag speed chess and give us your opinion on where humanity is headed. Where will evolution take us? All right, knight d3. <laughs> to 5-0 five, to five o for black. I mean, that's five. a little early to call it, but I agree. I mean, is he going to sack the exchange and take on c6? I think he, he, I think he should because it, it threatens to take b7. 
Ah, uh, yeah, actually, this is a pawn sack, right? He's just going to take back on c6 with his knight. Say thank but, you for this uh, c file. Yeah, it's, I was going to say it's a pawn sack, but it's so ugly for white. Let's let's analyze oh, that. If, if d takes c6, four. knight oh, takes disgust. rook to e1. I mean, black just plays rook c8. Here comes knight to b4 into the c2 square. Mike Sulu didn't even want that pawn on c6. Yeah, he doesn't even want it. Smart idea, actually. Yeah, all right, so he's going to c5 to try and deal with this thing on yeah. d3. Man, I think this is the this is a better approach here for White to try to avoid the avoid the compensation. Ah, uh, if B six, there's Bishop takes G seven, King takes yep. G seven, Queen C three. Little detail, little detail. So I think he's gonna deal with D three successfully here. Bishop B five. <clears throat> Poking at the knight, and plus, he, as you said, he kind of wants a, a knight on that square if he has to choose. But but yeah. Parham is unwinding. Look at this, right? I mean, I expect queen yeah. c3, and you know what I would like to do? Just give up the knight on a4 and use the b file for, for queen side pressure. Mm -hmm. So you want to move the queen here with check, then play rook to c1 maybe? Yeah, queen c3, yeah. rook f, rook e to c1, or even queen yeah. c3, and then a move like knight e5 to try to... Maybe maybe make Black's development of that knight a little dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. um, right. Poking at D seven. There's some way to C6. keep knight C six from being a good move. Huh. And he and then he instead just plays the knight to C three. Simple. Look again at the time, Serana. I wonder. Uh, one of the Jeez. notes, early notes, we should make for for post match interviews that we'll always get to everybody is, I wonder if Serana came in with a conscious effort to stay up on the clock. I mean, it, it just, it feels deliberate. I mean, he didn't take yeah. any time to double, double think about Bishop E8 there. No. And that was certainly a move where he had a, an array of choices, right? I mean, huh. We are officially in record territory, by the way, our, our, our stat people behind the scenes thank you so much for the work you do said that the previous jscc record was two wins in a row to start for black so now that we've had four consecutive victories by black yeah. we're, we're officially in new territory here yeah that makes sense i mean this is certainly this is certainly like twilight zone at this level to see black win game after game after game right. among 2700 gms i mean some people may think it's normal but i mean it's much more normal for white to get an opening advantage now and then <laughs> They go b6, knight c6, doesn't really help, but he could. b6, this is, this has become very weird because the risk of that is now c6 is calling my name. Yeah. I want to bring my knight in. Yeah, well, I d4. see a root. I see a root for her. d4 to c6. Yeah. Um, I guess... I guess the question is, is uh, does Black care about that? Was he going to meet knight d4 with e5? I mean, Serana obviously had some plan because Magsudlu took the time to play a move like h3. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, this still looks kind of straightforward to me, and I, I'm regretting maybe you didn't do it because now Black will play rook f to c8, I assume, and just or rook a c8, do something to challenge White's pressure on the c file. Yeah. Well, obviously it was way too early to say five wins for Black on move nine. This is about... About but equal, you, still just a game. You, you were right that it was five consecutive, you know, very easy openings for Black, yeah, right? It was Black was equalizing that he had an so outpost quickly. On D three, right? I mean, yep. Huh. It looks like uh, looking at their faces, it looks to me like Mike Sudlu is working harder. Yeah, it looks a little more Look stressed out, right? Like. He's not bobbing his head to music as he was a few moments ago. If you're just joining us, all four thousand of you, thanks for being here. Um, Bishop B six. Is he going to take on h3? We saw Serana make a sack in game one and win in epic fashion as black. And uh, <laughs> Mike Sulu doesn't says, want to no, find thank out, you. Man. No, thank you. Not going to let that happen again. Yeah. But yeah, he's going to get the C file here, I think, is the other threat that he had, which was perhaps most significant since C1's not covered at the moment. You go rook C7. If there's a trade, his queen stops rook C1. Otherwise, rook FC8. Either way, it looks like the C file falls into black Serana's hands, hands which. Could be concerning. That's a great point. And rook c7 also kind of uniquely exposes this move king h2, right? Because if you take, I take with check. Jeez, an extra tempo as if he needed it. Right. And then, then the rook would come over. And like you said, this and this is becoming really instructive and, and important to highlight because David and I focusing on the c file is not by accident. It's the only open file on the board. 
and uh, you know take. increases the value of it big time. Take. He didn't want to run into a scenario where he was where um, Serrano was the only one with a file, but. The next question I was going to ask you is how does Saran ever win with that light squared bishop, right? Like how do you ever yeah. outnumber White's forces somewhere and like break through and win? Well, the one long-term trump card we have is the a4 and b5 pawns, right? They are stuck to light square. So if that bishop right. does maneuver itself around, there is that idea, right? Yeah. And now, now I'm looking but at now G3. that bishop can play, right? I mean, it can come to e4. Um, right. Oh, but he, is he missing queen e7? No, he, he played it very quickly. So apparently he wasn't, but... He's doing hey, everything quickly, point, Danny, I was just but about he to did highlight. miss it. That's just how fast he reacts to a surprise. Yeah, very possible, right? And look at that time advantage again. Like, if anybody asked ahead of time who we expected to be up on the clock, I, I don't know that Serrano would have been a heavy favorite, but in all five games so far, if you're just joining us, it has been been the Russian just proving to be a much a much faster player right now, managing his time um, much more efficiently. I'm all now right, looking at Queen seconds again. seconds is going to tell. I mean, it's hard to play a whole game like this. Yep. I'm looking at queen g3. But Serana has been the one to make little, like, tactical oversights, so. That's true. In fact, both games he lost as white were kind of due to due to something something awkward and odd where he just didn't anticipate Magsudu's attack. But this, but this again, I mean, I don't want to call it yet, but the queen guards e7, so there's no rook coming in. Uh, I'm, but there's I'm, potential I'm for black blundering position. here. There's what? potential for blundering, right? Wait, do I see one? If bishop takes, rook takes, knight d2, knight takes, there's rook c1. But, okay, if bishop takes, probably the queen would have taken. So never Yeah, mind. the queen would come back out there. Okay, now you take, and a4 is falling. I'm just going to grab it. Why not? Don't mind if I do. Yeah. Queen b4. Oh, and now just be safe and let white run out of time. <laughs> yeah. Queen c3. Maybe? I'm assuming queen c3 is, is straightforward. Indeed, it is. And uh, yeah. now look at the rook and bishop kind of dominate together, working on this g2 pawn. Watch out for that. Although, look at that last little little trick, right? That's kind of irritating. It looks like you're about to lose the a7 pawn. Yeah, definitely Got, losing it. You're debating, are you taking d4 or playing rook b3 and going to get b5? He may have to switch tactics and go after b5 to be able to defend his b6 pawn. Yeah. He yeah. also has to watch out for knight e3, unseating his bishop, so... Interesting. King h6. He avoids the question for a move by taking away yeah. the check. Rook takes, defends the bishop, yeah. Bishop e4, I think, and then f5 to cement it. Oh, but is he missing something? Knight g4 check. Don't get mated. Don't get mated. That's always good advice, man. Always good advice. One second. This, Don't flag. It's basically if this e white king comes to g3. King, king f4. f4. Uh -oh. He's going to do his own dirty work, but... Uh, and it's over. Oh, Rook takes he did it. And... He did and it. The wind and now he's, uh... Oh man, and the chat's getting wild. Shout out to all of our mods. Everyone's been helping. We see you there. Shout out to the chess TV chat mod, Mr. Wind. Thanks for being here, dude. This is legendary chat. This is your only time you're ever going to see Black Wind. Like just every single Five game in a row. Five games in a row. I don't know what the all-time record in any SCC match is. Maybe, maybe that's a big challenge for for Stat Boy behind the scenes. We've already answered the question. If you're wondering, this is this is now five straight wins for Black. The previous Junior Speed Chess Championship record was two. I'm wondering if we've ever had a match in 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 this sort of format history that started this way. This is just fantastic. Yeah, es especially because hey, the games are exciting. I mean, this is like. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Black is okay, right? And, and and Black is winning games. I like it. Yeah. So this a6 is this pet sort of substandard queen's gambit of uh, of Magnus's, right? To get out of some of the main lines. <laughs> Rook a7. You gotta have good zit splash for that kind of play. Yeah. Okay. Now, now this is this is gonna be the challenge for White to stop the bleeding, right? <laughs> On behalf of the yeah. first move everywhere, White has to try to White has to try to get something, even just a draw. The first person to get a draw with White will win the match. That would yeah, be like seriously, insane. right? <laughs> the first person to, who equalizes with White. What's up, NJ Greg? Smarter chess. Next point wins. I did that yesterday, David. Just like the big brother who shows up and is like, yeah. oh, just I have to go eat now, so let's just do next point wins. I don't even remember what the score is. <laughs> Anybody who ever says they don't remember what the score is but next point wins was lying to you. They knew they what had, the score was. They had an idea. And they knew what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, some Queen's Gambit exchange structure. What plan is White going to go for here, Danny? 
F4, F3, E4, B4? What do you see coming? Or just the sit around? Okay, C5 is, is maybe going to force the question, right? Because, I mean, you... Uh... You, you asked it, and I didn't know exactly how white would coordinate for a kingside attack anyway, having just put the bishop on f4 where you might normally want to expand. But now you're transitioning into an IQP structure, yeah. probably even willing to lose the bishop pair, put a rook on d1 now, and, and just start ganging I think up. Give the check and go to f5. Oh, look at you calling it. I love that idea. The only yeah, issue so... I have with that is do I really want to take e6? If black plays queen d7, am I taking e6 to allow them to kind of take with the f pawn? I don't know. Good question. We'll find out in a second because he's going to we'll find out, more. right? <laughs> don't go anywhere, kids. Find out next time. Um, find out in 10 more seconds as Parham gets down to a small time disadvantage right out of the gates again, again. right? It's been all Serana on the clock all day. This rook on a7 is just like, did he like accidentally put it there? You know, you can't do yeah. those mistakes online. You know how in over the board chess, David, sometimes boards get bumped by the guy walking by and maybe a piece is on the wrong square? <laughs> yeah. That can't happen in online chess. So he, he obviously put yeah. his rook there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could have been, in online play, it could have been, in, in offline play, it could have been a touch move. Like, if you touch your rook and your knight's on b8, you're like, are you kidding me? I have to play yeah. rook a7. Especially if you got smart move on. I think yeah. we have that on chess.com, but ICC had that for years, right? Smart move is when you touch a piece, and if there's only one legal square, it yeah. automatically moves it there for you. And nobody who was good at bullet really ever used that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So bishop. for I mean, for a lot of people, it may seem really odd that White puts his good light squared bishop in a position to eventually trade with the bishop on e6, right? Uh -huh. I mean, that's Black's like terrible piece, right? And uh, basically, it doesn't make sense. But then well, I looked at a lot of GM games in the Queen's Gambit exchange, and they kept putting their bishop on this square. So, well, and I asked that question because I was originally in favor of that too. But I'm liking your plan more and more because if you take now. The advantage of opening up, let's just analyze it. If bishop takes, f takes, white immediately infiltrates with queen g6. Yeah. And you got you got real problems, right? Yeah. These are these are first world problems here. Um, That's why you also give the check on h7 first. You're driving the black king away from defending like f7. Right. Uh, so you're just weakening all the light squares because black's played h6. So you check, then you go, you could trade bishops. If black ever trades on f5 and you put your queen on f5, since they've already played h6, it's hard to play g6. And, uh, right, because it's pinned. In one of the and... Pro Chess League lesson videos, I looked at a game of Bartholomew's where he traded light squared bishops early in the game, then put his queen on f5, and basically uh -huh. won a queen's gambit exchange just off of like having a queen on f5 that black couldn't get out of there. Right. And it's a very dominant situation. I really like your point about the check on h7 forcing the king there. I'm going to back up a few moves to when that happened because what David's pointing out is, again, sometimes I think... Uh, beginner or less experienced players look at those checks as just like wasted moves, David, right? And like, you're like, why are you doing that, right? But as you pointed out, there's just a lot of utility in putting the king on a different square tactically than it would normally be on because of all the things we're seeing potentially happening on the dark squares. So, yeah, good stuff. I mean, imagine if black wanted to trade bishops and put his f rook on d8 or e8. He'd have to right. spend a move on king g8 to defend his f pawn. Well, creative defense here by Parham because he's going to take with the... Oh, he's oh. not going to take with the queen. He's allowing queen g6? I guess he so, has bishop f6. Bishop f6. Just allow. Just I was just about to say creative defense because he finally maneuvered his queen to c8 where he could take with the lady, but instead All he's right. like, no, uh, no fear. Go ahead, bring your queen to g6. Okay, so... Hmm. Doing some thinking. I mean, the things White wants to do are like e4... Um, but on e4, there's maybe knight takes e4. I guess at the end, you could play rook c6. Maybe. You could play e4, knight e4, knight e4. Uh, yeah, I, I like your idea. Two, four, rook c6. Something like that. But you still got to watch out for queen g6. Even if Parham has solved the original problem, or the immediate problems with a threat yeah. like bishop f6, it's you're still, you know, having to deal with a lot of weak light squares for the rest of the game. So Yeah, yeah. Don't take your eye off that. Yep. All right. So we're going to get a Now he takes. Trade. And he's going to follow with your e4 idea. Rook d4. Yeah, now e4 left. knight takes e4 is really not very good. So what's the idea here for white? He's, oh, black's going to take advantage of that pinny moat on c3. Yep. The queen on c2 is undefended. Yeah. 
You know, I want to do Black just you know, got out. You know what I want to do, David? Move. With that one move, I think he got out of the woods. I wanted to sack the exchange on E4. You know it. <laughs> Aram was bobbing happily for a second. Then A4 came and he gave a weird look. <laughs> that was so funny. Dude, I'm taking E4. Take it. Come on. Come on. And that's why he gave a weird look. He's like, you blundered another thing? I guess I'm but, playing well, black this game, so it makes sense. The, okay. Because the reason is is B4 is coming. That's the point. So you, you have to do some sort of exchange sack, which he does this way. But it's yeah. basically what I was asking for. He's going to take some slim drawing chances, which is all that they need. They need to draw a game with white if they want yep. this match. Let, let, me, let me show analysis of why that was an issue. The whole point and the reason David said Parham kind of paused is because this move A4 giving up the B4 square made it so that this this exchange stack was now forced. If this rook moved anywhere, then B4 was coming, and black was winning the knight on C3 due to the pin emote. So just to show that real quick, that's why we're now in the position we are where white had to sacrifice the exchange. But like Ooh. you said, I think, there's, I think there's drawing chances here. Yeah, but the queen trade seemed like a good idea from Parham. I'm... So Rana gave a little worried. bit of frustration there. He it kind of was like... Four. Look at the big smile. <laughs> I love how happy he is. I love it. Yeah. I love when chess makes people happy. Like the chat. Okay. Shout out to chat. Rook check. Rook a6, b3. This first? Okay. Yeah, the rooks on the second rank make me think you're you're right. This is, I don't know. The rooks are gonna look. So if you're white here in, a, in it to draw something like this, you're hoping you can eliminate the b pawns, without yeah. one getting your knight like trapped or out of play, or two losing anything on the king side like the f pawn. Because here comes the rooks on the second rank. Yeah, rook g6. That'll trade the last rook and give yeah. him another isolated pawn. Let's yeah, go this, attack. This That's looks it. like looks like Parham's gonna take it home. Six. That's Dude, six. That's going to be six straight wins for Black. Now I'm ready to call it. Yeah. Hey, Danny, look. The top guesser. Someone just Jeffrey pointed this Shong. out in Twitch chat. The top guesser is Jeffrey Shong, the next opponent of, of these guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> Again, for those of you who don't play Guess the Move on chess.com, you're missing out. Uh, by observing any game, you can make moves before the players do in any game, not just speed chess matches. And try to guess, uh, you know, if you talk to any very experienced and top-level chess coach, I mean, I remember working with Gregory Kaidana for years, uh, Grandmaster Grisha, and we, we would do solitary chess, guess the move exercises all the time. And so, and Jeffrey Zhang is probably one of the biggest um, in, inadvertent ambassadors for our feature there. He, he plays guess the move on chess.com as much as anybody. So, Hey, number five on the list, Anton Smirnov, teammate, kangaroo teammate of Serana. So he, so Anton Smirnov, another young GM playing Guess the Move right now. Also guessing along. Dude, Ch Chess Win just pointed out, Jeffrey Zhang had 24 of 31 guesses correct. That's because he's a strong GM. That's because he's at these guys' level. <laughs> yeah. And, pr and probably the yeah. seven moves he guessed differently were maybe just stylistic. It's you like know. it's like his prep for uh for for playing one of them later. It's like to really get inside their head with a nice long yep. session of guessing the move. Major nineteen fifty nine asks why Saron doesn't resign. And even though I think this position has still been plenty to play out at least for a while, I will point out he's right that in general Serana has played every losing game out for a long time. Right, that's yeah. been something he's done several times today. Serana so has you're, you're consistently not wrong. drawn these out as as far as he could. Yep. All right, Parham with the E4, switching up his openings after three unsuccessful King's Indian-style games. Yeah. I uh, think NM1G410 is trolling me. He said, Danny, you're interesting. Thanks for that, buddy. Thanks for being here at the Chess TV chat, buddy. You're interesting. Um, anyway, another Night Orf, but with colors reversed. Yeah. Um, Parham's really laughing about it. Maybe he's, he's thinking about the same thing as us, like how many times is black going to win? Like, what do I got to do to get a win as white? Yeah, well, I think going into Serana's Night Orf is a risky proposition in general. I've this is I love this stuff though. Go these, there these... and few come out alive. Sorry about that, GP Bear. You can always sub on your own. LOL. Um, <laughs> okay, Bishop G two. There's tactics on the deck, but these lines these lines are fun for White. You get a combination of solid king side synergy with a Fiend mm -hmm. Keto structure. Combined with English attack, attacking intentions. English attack, attacking intentions. Attacking. <laughs> hey. That's good. That was a lot of attackulation, right? Yeah. A um, lot of attacking. 
the uh in this english attack i wouldn't play bishop e3 because black just wants to play knight c4 anyway so yep just leave him on c1 leave the rook on a1 and you know well, apologize later to those guys for no, but you're, you're highlighting that's really a plan white has okay he played b3 to put the bishop on b2 but one of the ideas in the structure is the bishop on c1 is like david said already kind of where he needs to be usually f4 advancing your space is is kind of where you want to be um b3 bishop b2 my I wish I could read a whole, song now, Danny, a whole song about this thing. Yeah. He doesn't seem as confused about playing 1e4 as Serana did Yeah, <laughs> when Serana tried it out. Serana just a cool, cool cucumber there, looking like he's rocking some high-quality headphones. All right. All right, here comes F4. I'm liking white again. You know what? I'm going to call it. White doesn't lose this game. White That's doesn't lose. That's not just because I'm biased to the English That's attack a type of That's prediction, Danny, for white bold to not prediction. Lose. White does not lose this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man, if so, it could open the floodgates of 1E4 for Mike Sudlu. I mean, that knight F3 stuff that he plays, those Kings yeah. Indians and sort of offbeat flexible it hasn't gone structures. Well today. A lot of people play those in blitz as like blitz openings, right? So they can blitz out the first few moves, maybe throw in a couple pre moves and stuff like that. Yep. But for him, that's his actual bread and butter. That's like, that's, that's like his real OTB chess. This, yeah. This theoretical Nidorf, that is not his real stuff. <laughs> but it may be the best chance he's had to win. If you're just joining us, we've had three Kings Indian attacks by Mog Sudlu previous to this, and he was frankly worse, maybe by move 15 in every game, maybe move 10. So. This yeah. is this is a different story now, and I, I'm liking white. By the way, there's no taking on c3. There might have been a queen take c3, and Bob's your uncle on g7. So, yeah, is is white just gonna gobble d6? I think I he think is. so. Just I think it. he's just he's just won it like straight up, straight up cash money. Yeah. Now now d7's a problem. Even e5 Oof. is a move that's coming for white. Just open up the yeah. bishop on g2. Whew. Man, uh, open, Barham's open gonna be asking e4 himself square. why he doesn't play e4 more often. He's like, "What? You can do this? Right? I got my, all my positional advantages plus an extra pawn. I've still got a bishop <laughs> on g2." He's like, "Man, those chess principles, right?" And this is against a knight or specialist. What have I been afraid of all my life? Yep. So knight e3, queen f2. Yeah, that would be an interesting thing. Okay, knight d4. There's also queen f2. Let's go to the bat cave and show. Oh, there isn't queen f2 anymore because queen the the knight actually knight protects b6. Maybe? Yeah. So you could take. I mean, his one problem is the weak dark squares. He would have really liked to play your e5 move before the bishop on g7 got out. Yeah. I think that was definitely a thing. All right, bishop yeah, e3. He's still, he's still just up a pawn. If bishop takes e3, rook takes d1, bishop b6, rook e1, rook e1, knight b6, black's still down a pawn. Okay. I like this move, rook d3, increasing pressure. Black doesn't want to take, of course. Pawn takes, and the knight has to retreat. And David's idea of the pin may come back. It's, it's stopping black from playing things like knight e3, just to show a line. Like, if rook d3, pawn takes, bishop c3, knight takes. If you play knight e3, there's always moves like this in the end, pinning the knight to the queen. Yeah. Barham's doing a good job of controlling the counterplay here. He's doing a really good job. And he's up on of, time. Uh, yeah. I'm just letting Serana sort of impale himself on this position, right? Yep. Looking, looking, my prediction's looking strong. White's not going to lose. <laughs> yeah, he's doing a great job. He could even <laughs> win. Great job not losing. <laughs> Pretty he funny. He could even win. Queen d4. Okay, I like it. Can he trade rook to c3 and win the a pawn? If queen that d4 would, takes rook that c3... Would, that would save him. Uh-oh. Uh Wouldn't that takes save a look up. That was Hikaru Nakamura, number 11, right there. Checking oh, up I the ceiling. It. Parham did it? Yeah. Oh. He yeah. certainly the got a lot more up. looks than Serana. Serana's one through a hundred all look the same to me. <laughs> yeah, no, but Parham Parham's got he's got a little knock in him. He's looking to trap that bishop on b7. Yeah, I as, love uh, this move. The whole queen side dies. 
let's analyze and show that. The point here, everyone, is if black takes on b4, white will play rook c1, and there's no real way to deal with rook c7, that bishop is going to be lost. Even moves like a5 just delay the inevitable rook c7, bishop a6. You bring the rook, rook. to a7 and eventually pin it on c8. Yep. <laughs> like Sulu, man, it's infectious. Yeah. <laughs> the no, he's just dancing. I love it. Um, yes. And this is instructive, right? It shows like the initiative here, right? The C file being super critical, not just the pawns. And Black has to make a desperate move. What's this move? I mean, he, I see he's it's doing desperate, it just to open C8. The, uh... Yeah. Just to open C8 for the bishop so it doesn't get trapped. And, and wow. then he'll take B4. But actually, look at this tactic. If. If you play like h4, you still can't take b4 because of knight c6, forking b4 and e7. Yeah. Forky yeah. mode. And b6 is a great square for this knight, too. I guess if he just went there on his own, bishop d7 could be played. Ah. Uh, so. Okay, so, but but maybe your move bishop d7 is, is also going to be played on h4. Yeah. <laughs> so this is now an interesting endgame, Danny. This is... Uh, Feels like a three result to me. White's got this great pass D pawn. Yep. The queen side's pretty shaky. And and you're there coming to the C file at some point. And this is Black yeah. is just in del delaying it. But I agree, Sam Copeland. We do need a Parham bobblehead, but also a Hikaru bobblehead. That still hasn't been made. Okay, but I don't know why White doesn't play H four other than maybe what he's thinking is he doesn't need the H three pawn, David. Maybe he's maybe just he's calculating Rook C one, right? Just yeah. Maybe just he just do his thing. Maybe he's looking at e6, sacking a pawn back to lock the black king off the f file. Oh, I don't know. Dude. Dude. Wow, the bishop came to h3 anyway. He's hungry for the b4 pawn. He's getting out of the way of knight c6 to e7. Yeah. Whoa, but now Mogsudu's like, you're not getting that pawn anymore. Yeah, he's like, I gotta res I gotta respect that b pawn. So missed your chance. But now it's really comfy for white. Yeah, even knight e2, knight f4, just start marching this dirty Daryl deep on. Right, just just slow it down. Right, he's up a pawn. Yep, no rush. Just trying to slow things down. Rook a one to a six. Now who's got the queen side? I think I that think makes it done it now. I think it's clarified to me this position. We're clear. White will not lose every game in this match. I'm calling it. Yeah. Take h five. Okay, forcing on Passan. You don't really want to give that past h pawn. <gasps> Whoa, he's gonna mate him. He gave he wants the, the past whole thing. pawn. He never thought he could give it. Dude, look at that. He's going into F6, and he's a happy camper <laughs> right now. He is uh, on his way to summer camp. Oh, man. The kind where they don't even check your, your suitcase for all the things you brought from home. That kind of summer oh, camp. Oh, my goodness. That no, is like nothing. That is like joy. <laughs> like you just have like a picture of that up on it. Joy. Oh, man. Parham happiness. Parham happy. We need an emote of him just, like, hugging a heart. Parham happy. <laughs> oh, man, this is so good. Yeah. White White is not going to lose every game in the match. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. And he's got a lead on the clock, which happens mm -hmm. every time he forces mate. Then Serana kind of Yes, goes the players insane. can see each other on Zoom if they choose. Some players do that. I think Hikaru's... Uh, in hindsight... Done in that. hindsight, h6 would have been better than h5 this time, right, yeah. Danny? To force the, the trade, like, Enfassant go... comes back to bite me. <laughs> Can I get right? you to Enfassant me with the, with the title of my autobi autobiography? Enfassant came back to bite me. <laughs> um, yeah, this is uh, this is going to be mate on g8 and going to be the fun kind. Is that yeah. Was that Anastasia's mate or the Arabian mate? I get my knight and rook mates confused. I don't know. Beyonce's checkmate, maybe? Beyonce's checkmate, you know? <laughs> Throw a little Rihanna in there. The Arabian mate, Maximilian confirms. There we go. I like All that right. some people know names of mates. Yeah. But does that make it racist? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Gotta ask the tough questions. Oh, dude, is he he's gonna try to go full craziness? No. You're just If he didn't have his but, H pawn, Danny, he could have played Bishop C eight, Rook C eight, Rook D three check, right? That would have been nice. Yeah, it would have been a uh, crazy, crazy, crazy renegade rook, rook stalemate. He's gonna try and usher the king. Usher the out. king over to E seven where it'll get mated. Parham looking up, thinking about it. Like I said, that's more Nakamura number seven. Number seven yeah. is a confident eyes rolling up. Number 11 is double checking if I haven't blundered. In case you want to know about your Nakamura Wikipedias, check them out in my blog coming soon. Yeah. Um, 
Now he's grinning again. He had to think for a second. He, yeah. You're right. He's switching it up really fast here. Yeah, he's just and he's just shaking his head. He's loving it. By the way, these guys were having a pretty good time with each other. I think they can see each other on camera because um, for those <laughs> of you who don't know, they were they were having a pretty good time with each other before the match. Of course, none of you were there. You wouldn't know. They were making jokes, talking in Russian. They both speak Russian. Okay. FYI, so they were talking. I don't. I, I couldn't totally follow, but they. I, I could tell the mood was jovial. And guess what? The mood is no longer bad for White. We have victory. Yeah. We have victory, and uh, I saw Serana crack a smile for the first time there, like a you know a bigger Parham inspire, inspired smile. We're gonna give another shout out to Evolution Chess, and I know it's. I said it was your last one, but we gave him a big shout out yesterday for an initiative that helps underserved kids not undeserving kids are in shame on you underserved kids are just and hates the kids man and this is chess kid this that's is right a in the fight. inner cities of new york and uh, he also has a GoFundMe. but anyway way to go thanks for all your work evolution chess and uh, we hope that your program does well in new york city so there you go very nice of you danny what do we got uh, here man we got another qgd and another rook a7 i mean he's rushing that rook to a7 yeah, what is that? Can somebody explain the rook on a7? <laughs> I don't know. It okay, I like e4, though, from a... I like e4 to say, like, let's open the position while there's a rook on a7. Like, it feels more principled. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, defense b7 against the queen on b3, but uh, all right, what's the idea? He wants to play d5. He wants d5, yeah. D5, now he's he's threatening a penny mode on the c6 pawn, a battery. There's d5 coming, and actually, it's actually kind of irritating to deal with because if you play the rook f to c8, and maybe that's not as irritating as I thought. Okay, then you trap the guy on a7 for a while. Stops d5. Okay. Establishing the knight on e5. The rook yeah, starts like his journey five. back to the real world. Yep. We've got roughly 10 minutes remaining here in the first portion. So okay. it's it's possible, David, this is our last five-minute game. Right. Which... Or we could just barely get two in, right? That's why the prediction's right. always five to four in the uh, five minutes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an awkward... It's an awkward set of time because remember the format is that if any game starts before the official game timer has run out, that game continues and it does count toward the score. So sometimes you get almost almost a full extra 10, 15 minutes of free chess, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. I would love free chess. You love free chess, right? Yeah. Well, I don't see many big opportunities for Serana here. He's got the IQP. He's supposed to maybe be doing something when you've got the IQP. Don't but really there's no real pressure mm. coming to the D4 pawn, right? Right. It's kind of stable for the moment, right? Like neither player is doing. Well, this this position much. highlights what my uncle Yermo taught me really well because it he said the best isolated pawn is one with no defense. And people, every time I say that, David, I always have to ask people to use their imagination in an abstract way. But this is, I finally have one on the board. What, what, what Yermo one. always meant by that is when you have an isolated pawn with no defense, by, by definition, in between the lines, you're saying that your rooks are on the adjacent files, being aggressive instead. You're saying that your minor pieces have occupied aggressive squares. And usually the compensation you get for an IQP is the space and the open squares around the center. So we've finally done it. I can retire. This yeah. is the position Uncle Yermo was talking about because the pawn isn't lost. It's, it's still on the board, but white's compensation is a ton of active pieces, right. and, and black has no pressure on the pawn. And look at Serana again, like offering the trade of his, of his good bishop for black's bad bishop. But, but white's I think better like... here. I mean, this is white shouldn't be looking to perpet here. This is, this is Uncle Yermo's favorite. There we go. I like that. Look, he's going to swing the queen to f3. That's a threat. That's a threat, Danny. By the way, if you get queen f3, you're threatening knight g6 mate if you're into that. Yeah. We still <sighs> like white. The queen, Bartholomew on f5. The Bartholomew on f5. <sighs> but some pieces have been traded. What's he, what's he going for next? 
Yeah, I mean, minor pieces coming off the board usually help the defender. That's kind of what David's referring to there. But there's bishop h4 maybe coming. Mm -hmm. Maksudu going to try to get some queens, queens traded. I still like queen f3. Yeah. Keep the, keep the queens happy on the board. Yeah, it looks like it's got to be queen f3 here. Hmm. But f5 was really perfect, so he's kind of he's kind of upset that queen c8 got played, I think. Yep. f5 was really perfect because any scenario where you go after the knight with bishop h4, if the knight moves, mm -hmm. queen h7. So it was no, nice to right. have queen pressure is... on the f-file towards f7 and this h7 spot. Well, you know what he might be thinking about? Is he, is he thinking about the loose bishop on d6? I mean, there's... Okay, there's, I'll just show it on the analysis board. There's ideas yeah. of queen c8, and then I'll just say knight g6 check, and you win the bishop with d6 with check. And Okay, the problem is this is really just a big fancy trade, right? Yeah. And, and, probably and that not, knight is going to be great in the yeah, end game. that knight's going to love that d5 square. So, okay, so that, that shows why that's not what you want, but I just wanted to kind of point that out, that there is some looming potential tactics. You've got to watch out there with that king on f8. Weird checks are in the air. Yeah, the other move that might be in the air at some point is d5. So I thought he oh. might go for the trade now. He trades. There's no e6. It's protected h4. well, but bishop h4. Ooh, if yeah. rook d7, e6 comes. Yeah. Ooh. Messing with that coordination. And now that forces g5. I wonder if Moksugu didn't see that. Does he really want to do what he's doing now? Uh, He's not grinning about it, so no. <laughs> yeah, Farham, Farham shows us when he's happy, you know? Yeah. But he should still be okay. I think he can still hold this together. Yeah. And that knight on d5, as you said, is just such a happy camper, right? Just and not not the not the, the purest definition of an outpost square, everybody, because usually an outpost square is on the fourth rank or further if you're black. It's in enemy territory. But an mm -hmm. outpost square is a square where you have a piece and it can't be attacked by pawns. So the piece is, is permanently solid in many ways, and, and that knight is, <laughs> is very good. All right. Parham's decided that he wanted this. Parham's smiling. Yeah. Parham happy. I wonder what happens when Parham hungry. Parham happy, Parham hungry. Yeah. Be good to see that too. Knight on the move. Okay, queen slides over to b3, but but watch out for knight d4. Yeah. You could you can get away with it though. You can play a4, knight d4, queen b4 check. Mm -hmm. And and then find safety for your rook. Yeah. Rookie three. Yeah. He wants a four and to he take b7 immediately. So the idea there is he's trying to avoid the fork emote so that a4 is a real threat. And and because of that, Parham defends b7. I like it. I like it a lot. All Maybe right. just double rooks on the e file and try to punch e6 in, David? Nope. Yeah, I mean, I think e6 is the move he really, really wants. Is he going to try and come through g4? Ooh. Look keep at you, the, full board awareness. Keep the knight off of there. Or is he going to play f4 at some point because he's got his rook ready to go to g3? Yeah, you got to be careful of rook d4 for black, though, right? Like queen g4, maybe yeah. black just plays rook d4 immediately. Yeah, there's a lot uh, that can go wrong here for white. Oh, he plays f4. What an aggressive move. Yeah. He's trying to open up the king side to get rook g3. Let's analyze. Let me show you. If g f4, bishop f4, there's a threat of rook g3, and... That's how you expose. So then, the rook open to d4 emperor. in that position, and where is he going to go? After takes bishop takes rook d4. Yeah, I mean you could still play rook g3, and it would be a fancy trade, I guess. But look, Parham is Parham has played rook d4 immediately, mm -hmm. which is you know kind of your idea. Same thing, unless unless White's going to play rook c4. Gosh, this is this is like a move away from White blundering here. This is very tricky. Yeah. Whoa. Why? Crazy what? town. Black could just take that pawn, right? And leave. Parham is... What... Parham doesn't believe it. No. Serana's like, huh, why did I do that? Yeah. Serana confused now. He wants to work F1, and there's still a lot of practical chances for white because this king is potentially open, and, and uh, you know, you're a blunder away in bliss. Yeah. But, but look at Parham. Bishop D1 to keep some more wood on the fire. 
Yeah, he's just executing now. We can see his focus and play e6 next. And if queen e6, he'll switch to rook g3 probably. And it'll be hard to cover that. So it's hard to cover e6 and g5. It is a little bit tricky. So I guess... g3, g4. Okay. I like it. Both players totally focused. Parham's eyes calculating a mile a minute. Queen yeah. e3, trying to flip the script over to the dark squares. I Even if this yeah. game doesn't work out, I'm just saying from a practical perspective, I feel like Serana has maybe done the right thing to just to just make it about Parham having to defend his king under time pressure. It's true. He hasn't made it easy. He's made yeah, it Yeah, he messy. just hasn't made it easy. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of times this is, like, different in Blitz than in, you know, Rapid or in Slow Chess, but... <laughs> If your opponent has to find some tough defensive moves, it can, it can trip someone up. Can yeah, and that, that's especially in, in time pressure, right? Okay, now there's queen h5 coming. Okay, speaking of finding tough moves, all of a sudden white's king is in huge trouble here. How mm -hmm. does he stop queen h5? So on queen h5, he would have king g1, right? It doesn't end the game, does it? Oh, you're right. But you know what? Maybe the inner mizzo is rookie four first. Oh, e6. Queen g5? What what is he doing? Why is he I don't know. I don't think it's good enough for him. I think I think Parham's got everything covered now. Yeah. Everything coordinated, everything protected. The time advantage slipping away. Now Serana officially yeah. lower than Parham. Yeah. Queen check, queen g6, queen h4. Okay. Queen h7. Should be rook good d5 enough, right? is a move here, just threatening rook h5, but oh no, but then rook takes g4. Yeah. I feel like queen h7, like there's nothing wrong with this endgame, just nothing for yeah, white to do. just get the ladies off the board. Wow, what a great game by Parham. Honestly, this felt like white's, white's practical pressure was going to be a ton to deal with. Oh, you know, he had rook g to e3 there that with threats of bishop h4. He yeah. didn't see Black it. Look does at the... need to get the knight off of b5 at some point. I, I think I think rook g to e3 was really strong there instead of retreating the rook, and the bishop on e1 was coming to h4. Oh, there's rook h7 check and yeah. game over, knight e2. He missed it. Oh, my God, and Serana slams <laughs> down. Parham breathes a sigh of relief, and we officially... Right. We're going to check the game clock. If it doesn't count, we're going to abort this game because sometimes the timer yeah. there is for your entertainment and knowledge but we have official staff behind the scenes that run these events. And okay. I'm waiting for word as to whether or not this game, this game that just started counts or, or, if, or if the time was actually up. Yeah, so I see one comment of officially last game now, I think. Wow, wow. So we're going to get a full extra game here yeah. uh, in, this, in this portion. Yeah. The fans may a... be expecting it at some point, Danny. You know, you talked about like you could get a free game of chess, but you know how when you're like used to getting that that extra thirteenth bagel with your dozen, right? And then like <laughs> at some point, it's it, like right? you can't sell so you're not even appreciative of your free chess game, yeah. And it's all free, right? We're on Twitch, right? There you go. Let me. I want to. I want to back up real quick to that last game in the analysis board as they play this next Alrighty. one because I'm that position just got out of control for White so fast, but I felt like this one critical moment right here, instead of backing up the Rook, if he plays Rook G to E3 on move 51, mm -hmm. suddenly there's a mating net that Black has to worry about with the Bishop coming to H4 and the two Rooks being coordinated against the Black King. So I think I think this moment was huge, making the wrong decision to back up the Rook rather than, rather than freeing up the Bishop to H4. But okay, Parham strikes, yeah. he holds on. And he's now got a two-game lead, so Serana is up against it in the last five-minute game. Yep. That was a huge opportunity there. Wow, wow. Push DePon says bagels. Wow, Americans. I didn't know bagels were an were a American thing. Maybe they are. I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that's true. He says, like, wow, Americans. Like, that's, like the bad thing about yeah, us or know. something. I mean, first of all, bagels, like, wow, oh. right? And everything bagel with some schmear? Are you kidding me? All right. <laughs> oh, man. J.D. Cannon says, yeah, who else would think to boil bread? Silly Americans. Okay. Wherever you're at, Chess TV chat, 
twitch.tv slash chess. Thanks for being here. If you happen to be watching this via the index page of chess.com or your home page, that yeah. means you haven't fully gone down the rabbit hole of Twitch. So go ahead and click on the player. Come to twitch.tv slash chess and hit the purple follow button. Do it for me. Do it for your country, if nothing else. Do it for your country. <laughs> so, um, Or make bagels for your country. Apparently that's oh America as well. Knight f5. Okay. We're yeah, back to got a C4 weird and F5. Sicilian. Clear where each player's advantage is. Parham went back to E4 again, Danny. Yeah, I mean, it, it worked. It, it, the, if you're just joining us, we had five... Oh, no, sorry, we had six consecutive victories by Black to start this match. And it wasn't until Parham switched to E4, as he's now done again, that he got his first win as white. So, um, yeah. That's a, it's kind of a big deal if you keep track of how often black wins at this level. It's kind of a big deal. Leather-bound books. So, um, G4. I've never been a fan of these types of Sicilians for white, David. You know, I'm an English attack guy. Yeah. You know, I don't like opening up my own king with the G yeah. pawn. Yeah. And this A3 move isn't looking super great at the moment to me. I mean, I feel like black's position is okay but it might be one of those cases where you can play like g5 and then trade the bishop on e7 put your bishop on g5 but there's always knight b2 no i'm not really sure how this works out for white honestly you have to wait to see how meg sudlu solves this how he uh how he figures out white's position maybe maybe b3 knight takes a3 bishop let's analyze take... it so you're Maybe saying white B3 can get can away with e3 here? Maybe b3 can be played because on knight a3, bishop a3, queen c3, there's knight e7 yeah, check. Yeah, e7 is hanging so, at the end of these lines for sure. So yeah. maybe you can get away with b3. Yeah, because if knight back to b6, then you play bishop b2. and then Or, or even bishop b3 because you're still pointing out that the c3 knight is poisoned. Or and even they... that, yeah. Oh, wait, if they no, they can take a 5 inner mizzo and, and taking b6 doesn't solve the problem, so I'm wrong about that. But yeah. yeah, bishop b2, as you said. Oh, wow. But look at this. He's going all in on the king side here. Yeah. Queen d3 and as soon and as the knight lets go of b2, he just jumps on g5. I love this. I love this. And normally, again, I guess, you know, <laughs> putting the king on the on the queen side is sort of what I was referring to in English attack. That gives yeah. white the get-out-of-jail-free card to just rush the g-pawn. Did you see but how many seconds Serana spent sacking his exchange there? Exactly. Like Less than hardly one. any. I, I didn't keep exact track, but I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's it's saying point seven on the chess.com server. Point seven seconds. Just be like, yeah, you know, I just Yeah, whatever. no big deal. You can have the rook. I don't want it. Yeah. I do yeah. like it though. I like the I dynamic. Like, you want my knight, you want my rook. Either way, I'm gonna beat you on the dark squares after you do this. Yeah. Crazy. In fact, Parham doesn't even want it. Yeah. Takes, takes, queen takes, knight c4. Okay, now there's knight d5 in some positions. Mm-hmm. Like this one. Serrano's body language still pretty calm. Maksudu pretty calm. much more intense, much more yeah. much more zoned in and focused right now. If he's ever calm, let me know so I can check if, it if out. If he's ever calm, I'll let you know. Yeah, no, yeah. Parham is given his yeah, full, full, full effort if he didn't think chess was a contact sport. Um, and now, now White has ideas like Queen G5 coming and then followed by Rook lifts, and there may even be weird things happening on the H-file. Serrano is so calm, but he's got to be lusting for that B2 pawn. Like, I want to take it so bad. Yeah. yeah he plays... I thought maybe maybe Parham would play Queen G5 and try to keep the knight there. Mm -hmm. He backs up, but you look at this. He's got an eye on the C6 square. He's relocating. Positional chess. Yeah. Going to put the knight on C6. Well, this I is tense. This. this is a tense position. Knight c6. We're going to get rookie eight. And this is like a weird... Okay, I, I keep mentioning that in our fingers attack. Even though the white king is on the king side, this is a very similar structure to sometimes what happens. White gets this dominant light square bind on the queen side, everyone, but black gets the dark squares. You're going to see this bishop come to g7. Yeah. Immediately hits the rook, but I don't even know he's going to take it. He's just, he's just trying to dominate the dark squares. He's got e5 to yeah, use, and this is a very typical kind of knight orphan balance. I think he's just going to take on g6. I mean, this h4, h5 is so critical for white because 
the problem for black is that he doesn't have enough pieces on the king side, and the problem yeah. for white is the g2 yeah. bishop is garbage. So h4, h5 is like right on both of those factors. Queen d7. Stopping bishop h3. So there's no hgfg bishop to e6. Yeah, and I was wondering if there's tactics with putting a rook on e6, hg, hg, and then rook e6, and you just punch open the light squares. I think he might I wonder if he sees this idea. I like it. Do oh, it. That would Put be a rook on it. Oh, rook I, let's analyze that. Was rook e6 possible there? Because, again, the tactics, everyone, is that if rook takes, pawn takes, the queen... Oh, that's what I missed. If you go bishop d... Oh, no, I didn't miss that. The knight can't go from c4 to e2. I thought I saw a fork, but I was seeing ghosts. Yeah. I, I, what do you think about this rookie six idea? That looked really strong. I Looks think he might have really missed that. Really strong. Maybe he just saw two strong things and didn't spend too much effort. Yeah, on the and I guess the, because bishop h three is. Yeah, and and I guess the rook is still coming to e six at a moment's notice if you want it. The only reason this would be bad is if black could somehow play knight e five and then you never get into e six. Yeah, and then you never get your chance again. Knight e five, yep. bishop h three looks fine. Yeah. No, Parham seems he seems happy there. Yeah, no, and, I think this he gave, h4, he, h5 idea won the game for him, Danny. Yeah. He gave kind of a nod on queen g3. I was wondering maybe he thought he missed it, but then maybe he kind of was like, ah, bishop h3 is coming anyway. You can't really stop it. Yeah, it looks like he's about to crack open a massive lead. Takes, takes, rookie six. He gets it the second time around, and I love it. Yeah. Take on g6 or bishop h3 here. He's going to he's gonna pause 10 seconds. Yeah. For station identification on the Parham Mog Sulu radio network. He, he also has Bishop E4 coming now. This is just, wow, what a clinic. Mog Sulu is, is this about to be his fourth win in a row? I think so. Yeah, you're right. That's insane. That's a lot of wins in a row. That's, that's a real streak. Again, if you're just joining us, Black won the first six games. And Parham, having Black the second time, won to tie the match at 3-3. But if he wins this game, he'll have won his fourth game in a row uh, just just on a tear right now to bring the five-minute portion to a close. Of course, right. we still got plenty of chess ahead. Serrano's finally threatening to take on e6. Like, bishop e4, he could play rook takes e6. Look at that so, move, knight d8. Knight Look at d8. the smile. <laughs> Farham is so happy. I love it. <laughs> He's like, that's the stuff. That's what I play chess for. Yeah. A little early to bring out the adoption uh, emotes there. It's only four wins in a row, but uh, yeah. Wow, thanks MGT3 for the bits. Glad you liked the commentary. Okay, he's got to give up the exchange, but this should just be a Moxulu conversion now. Moxulu strong. There wasn't anything wrong with yesterday's match, was there, Danny? I, I, I was don't know. watching. I said it was. It was a, I mean, it was. Wait, wait. Ye kind of dominated okay i mean i don't know to each his own right yeah that's true uh, that's true all right uh saran has finally managed to sack an exchange instead of losing pawns that's probably best for him the bishop on g2 can it come to e4 i mean the game will be won when that bishop enters the game I like your idea because the queen on d8 guards g5, so you can play bishop e4 and not worry about a perpetual. Oh, but look at the look at the geometry. He's lining up the queen and rook to work together on h4. Yeah, he's trying to win without that bishop. Wow. It's like rook h4 will do. If you didn't think you needed to stay in school, kids, that was a geometry lesson right there. G5? Queen and rook coordinating. Yesterday's question, David, was asking whether it's ever appropriate for a prodigy to drop out. Um, yep. of school to pursue like a specific discipline yeah. so was was led led to some fun interesting social social media discussion but this mm -hmm. is just really well coordinated attack here by parham yeah Ooh, he allows queen g5 i guess he has rook g4 okay yeah he's got a lot of good stuff here right now but Math. 13 my seconds old, my old my old nemesis. Darkness, my old nemesis. <laughs> my old friend. Um, all right, this is just this is just awesome. That's sick. Look at this. Rook f5. Just do it. Pick up g7. Oh, the black queen was covering c8, Danny. See, I would have lost this game. Oh, you thought you would see. I wonder if Parham thought that, too. He's laughing a little bit. <laughs> oh, here, here comes, comes the bishop, the bishop. h5, and it's just enough for Serana to say, all right. 
All right, and ba look at him basically giving himself like a let's go happy power. That's what I was thinking. I was like, that looks like let's go. <laughs> I know, right? He's like, he's like, he's he's, he's laughing. I don't he's know. Like, this is crazy, man. I I can't believe how fun this is. I know. Like, can you believe I'm really good at chess? I love this. <laughs> this is awesome. Well, we uh, we are enjoying it as well, and we now have uh, what what started as a match that was totally back and forth. Victories being traded with the black pieces, no less. If you're just getting here. The final portion finishes similar, similarly and close to what we kind of predicted, a 3-0 uh, victory there in the five-minute segment by Parham Maksulu. But when we yeah. come back, the three-minute portion gets underway, so don't go anywhere. The Junior Speeches Championship, brought to you by ChessKid.com, returns in a few. Man, I'm bored. Pro Chess League regular season is over. It's hot outside. What am I gonna do? I'll tell you what he's gonna do. He's gonna sign up with the other Pro Chess League super fans and play in the first ever Fan Summer Series. Now you can team up with the world's top chess players. Join other users like Gold Dust Tori, MC Addle Chess 4, Andrea Botez, Moscatel A7, Helms Knight, and others are already competing actively for their favorite Pro Chess League teams every week. The PCL Summer Series is a first-of-its-kind event where fans like you play alongside Pro Chess stars like Jan Ludwig Hammer, Sam Shanklin, Georg Meyer, Vara Kobian, and Eric Hansen. Fans from two PCL teams play against each other every Saturday through the month of August, and $1,000 in cash is up for grabs to the most active and best performing fans. 
Will one of them be you? The Pro Chess League Summer Series Championship awaits those brave enough to take on the world's top chess players. So what are you waiting for? Get in on the action today by going to prochessleague.com slash summer series. Click on the club logo of your favorite teams, sign up and start playing. Of course, make sure you tune in and watch all the action at twitch.tv slash chess, chess.com TV, and see who takes home summer glory. Perhaps never a better time to mention the Pro Chess League Summer Series than when we have a man sporting a Pro Chess League polo right next to me, kind of the face of our, of our Pro Chess League lessons and, and channel in many ways. You mentioned you do these videos for the YouTube channel, which are some of the most underrated content that Chess.com produces, if I don't say so. I'll say it. You don't have to. It's a, they're, the videos are amazing. <laughs> but tell everybody a little bit about the Pro Chess League Summer Series and uh, how hype have you been about that? How much fun has that been? It's been awesome, and we've got a new division starting this Saturday. So it's split up into these three-week segments, and uh, everyone can play, which has been super exciting. Um, like Parham Smile level exciting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we and uh, you know you get to play for your favorite team, or you know just just play a bunch yourself for yep. multiple teams. And uh, we've got this this new team coming up, the Sao Paulo Capybaras, who are starting on Saturday. Um, we've got all the final four teams from the Pro Chess League are participating in the summer series. So far, three of them have already made it to the uh, to the playoffs at the end of August. So yeah, it's amazing. And you know, I think yeah. sometimes it it it's getting overlooked. Obviously, we do so many events on Chess.com right now that I understand it's hard for people to keep track of everything. But this is this is really like it's something we've never done before. It's, it's unique in the sense that fans are literally competing alongside grandmasters for cash prizes. And uh, anyway. Awesome. Yeah. You're doing an amazing job. People can see the standings Thank there. You. People can now see the players there. But before we jump back into games and talk a little bit about the 3-1 segment, let's remind everybody, David, of when the next Junior Speed Chess Championship match gets underway. That is going to be next Tuesday, July yeah. 16th. July 16th. The American, Jeffrey Zhang, who just Jeffrey. crossed 2,700. Yeah. Uh, how do you look at that match? Now, His, now uh, the last American in the competition. Right. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know... Uh, What's his name? Robert, we, we said, really likes Serrano, but I think if you look at the right side of the bracket, everyone knows Wei Yi's about to face again, uh, off against Ali Reza Faruja. Yeah. But Jeffrey Zhang, at the three seed there, this guy's got to be the favorite for many people um, on, on the right side of the bracket. But, but what do you think about yeah. his chances against Gladura? I think his chances are great against Gladura, yeah. I mean, in the first, in the first round, uh, Jeffrey was much more dominant. Gladura had, like, an amazingly close match that um came down to a tie and then a bullet like extra four game mini match right to break it so um he had a really tough time uh just getting through the first round and uh jeffrey was kind of cruising and so sometimes uh, so we've talked about that sometimes that can be a little worrisome right because you know hikaru was mentioning that in Ali reza's match where yeah. sometimes you wonder about the people that don't get tested until a really big match and then how they handle it so i like yeah. that you mentioned that because that'll definitely be a storyline we talk about if jeffrey ends up in a close one right that was exactly the question i didn't have time to ask you during the during the five minute segment i was going right. to say like Maxudlu had like an easier time serana had a tougher opponent closer match who do you think that that right. favored but yep. um I don't think Jeffrey had a weaker opponent. I just think he's like a level better. So I think right. I think he would be a major favorite in his next match. All right. Well, I think the three minute games are, are about to start right now. And uh, speaking cool. of a level better, that's something that uh, Serrano is going to need to do. Again, if you're yeah. just joining us, he lost the last four games of the five minute segment. That means, yes, you're doing your math right. He was up three to two. Yeah. And Magsulu won four games in a row. So, um, but not yeah. mixing it up. David, we've got we've got the same opening that he's been employing pretty much the whole day as White. So your your thoughts, if you, if I'm putting you in the coach's chair to Serrano, what what do you what would you give, uh, given his head there? Excuse I me, mean, give his there. four game didn't look good, so I would say he should stick with something in the queen pawn openings, but um, but he's got to do better. He's got to try like a different plan or something. Yeah. Um, he tried the IQP last time. That was a switch up. That didn't work. I haven't seen a minority attack from him yet. Maybe he should try a minority attack. Yeah, uh, more traditional kind of QGD plan for White. But uh, he's really he's, he's got to try he's, something. He's really liking this idea. With how many games have we seen the bishop come to h7 with check and then back up to either f5 or d3? 
like every four? white game other than his one game with E4. <laughs> right. Well, and now now we're seeing the minority attack with B4, but Mogsudlu puts the uh, kibosh on that idea. Uh -oh, but let's go to the back game. Is going to get to C4? Yeah, that's the idea. And, and let's let's go and analyze exactly what the minority attack is, because you mentioned it, and it was the first time we almost had it. The idea here yeah. that David said with B4 is if you give white A4 and then B5, you've got two pawns attacking these three pawns, and the idea is that if you combine those those pawns with the open C file, white's going to get some targets, going to get some weaknesses. And so the, the risk of a move like B5 is that often it weakens things like the C6 pawn. But as David immediately said, is sometimes you can play B5, and if white's not going to have time to get to C6, your knight will go from D7 to B6 and into C4, and so now yeah. we see that's exactly what Magsulu does. He brings the knight to b6, and, and he intends to fill the c4 square. So um, Once the knight's on c4, black can actually be very strong on the queen side with their majority. I mean, yeah. we should all remember that in general in chess, like you play where you have the pawn majority, not the minority. That's why they call it the minority attack, because it was sort right. of like a surprise positional discovery that there was a position in chess where you wanted to play the, where you the have lesser the minority. pawns. Normally, right. You want to get that majority rolling. Once you get that knight outpost on c4 and there's no pressure on the c file from white, black can sometimes play a5 and just really start pressuring on the queen side where they have the extra pawn. That's um, a great point. And I'm, I'm highlighting that right now that that's, that's probably a move that, that, that is on black's agenda very soon. And, and, I'm, and I'm liking Parham's position ki kind of again. I mean, okay, it's a yeah. little bit early to say that either side has a big advantage, but... I like your idea of a5. I also like that black has this weak d4 pawn he's kind of putting pressure on. And I just don't like that white lacks a concrete... Like, am I playing knight h5 here? What is what is white doing here? And, and maybe, g6 says no. Maybe bring a knight to c5. Maybe just okay. sit with the rooks in the center. I mean, basically, Serana did what you have to do when b5 and knight b6 was looming. He cracked with e4 right away and got that bishop kind of stuck on b7. That's the that's pretty much the best you can do there unless black's overlooking a tactic yeah um so he he did what he had to and now um now he's got to just plop those knights in the center and and you know hope that bishop on b7 is not good i mean if you compare yeah, i this... was just about to highlight that that obviously we've been talking about blacks playing the majority the one thing we should highlight about this structure that doesn't favor black of course is is that that Franken pawn on b7? If all things stayed the same, if if White could just like David, if White could just imaginary chess take the bishop on e4 and the knight on d5 off the board, we would love White, right? Because the knight comes from e4 to c5, and it's just fantastic. Yeah. So I mean, maybe we're like talking too strategic because he just seems to like have hung a pawn with knight e5, um, and and then yeah. then the strategy's over, right? Once, but but once it is positional, knight. right? He he wants to. He wants to get a good knight versus, you know, a bad bishop type of structure, whether it remains the same or, or... Okay, I don't think you really want to take on d5, but I'm looking at... Like, if I could take on d5 and, and get a knight in on this square, is this sort of thing worth a pawn, right? The domination wow. there, there is potential weaknesses on the dark squares. Wow, and... he's playing f4, f5. That's Oh my gosh, intense. okay. There's a, there's a knight coming to e3 now. Oh no, sorry. Queen c3. Queen, queen, queen c3 so... wins a piece. So I think Black's going to play g5, and then he's going to play f6. Um, and then on knight takes f6, queen c3. Oh, uh, let's go to the back cave and analyze that. that that's an awesome line. G5. Because he can't let Black lock it up, right? If Black plays g5, I don't think he can let Black also play f6. I think he's going to just play f6. He's got to open yeah. his pieces. Well, we're going to find out. The live board, we just saw g5, everybody, but, but stick right here because David's line is f6. And if the knight takes it, queen c3. But uh. look at... Look at Mug's, Mug Sudlu's position now. How is he going to defend if the pawn comes to f6 and you can't take it? Right. Those dark squares are about to get So here he's going to lose the d pawn to rook d1. But if he'd moved his king, then Serrano was going to play knight h5. So that's that's how Serrano was playing without f6. So that's uh -huh. an interesting thing to see. So now, but now, now who's better in this endgame? We, we take, the queens come off. White's going to get the d file with the f rook coming to d1. And I'm okay. Serana has not won a game as white yet in this match, everyone. But I'm, I'm liking White's chances in this endgame because don't count out. We had an Arabian mate idea earlier, right, yeah. David? Don't count out that awkward king there. There's a mating net on the on the on the loose. If he didn't have that awkward king, I think he would be worse because Black could just freely play with the rook. You know, rook e one to a one to a two. Yep. Um, and I I think that uh, that Parham would be better because he's got these ideas of like knight h five. 
maybe maybe Serana can can get his own little mate going or at least yep. a perpetual. And look at time. If you're just getting here, most of the storyline in the five minute portion was that Serana was the faster player. Um, now Magsulu obviously put a pretty good run together, won the last four games. But here's Serana back to his old tricks of being up on the clock. And he, okay, White is playing for two nice. results here. There's no way White can lose this game. Right. He's keeping the rook from getting active by kicking that bishop. So he's got rook d8 check. Oh, very nice. King can't come up to h7 because of knight f6. So black's kind of stuck in there. And uh, Serana's Even a got a simple his move, king of two. On. I'm looking at king of two here just to like my make my human brain happy where I just eliminate ideas. But okay, yeah. Serana's going to find something more accurate than my oh. human brain. Oh, he's got a fork emote on f6. Yeah. Get your pitchforks out. What's the defense? What's the defense? He's got nothing. Resignation. Wow. I, I I hadn't yet processed why rookie seven was losing, but sure. <laughs> Back to the night orf. If Serana loses this match because of the night orf, which so far he is, right? I right. mean, the difference in the match so far... He's kept up with Black. The difference in the entire match is two losses with the Night well, Orb. That was... Okay, first of all, let's just appreciate it. That was a huge win for the match, right? Because Serana had lost four games in a row. So I think that's yeah. that's that's big there. Um, he's, he stops the bleeding. He's back within two games. But um, but also it was his first win is white. So I just... I, I feel like that was a huge momentum momentum shift there. And um, Yeah, that's true. Par Parham sticking sticking with e4, which is the only only place he's found an advantage with the first move. Everyone he played the king's inning attack in the first three games, but but Serana won those three games as black. So we're seeing Parham yeah. stick to the night orf. But you said Serana's supposed to be the guy that knows these night orfs better, right? He's but it's been so all Mog Zulu. It, man, if he loses this match because the night orf, it just it 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 will blow my mind. Right. It, it would be it would be the, the not not the not the way you you scripted that thing. But yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm liking Magsudlu's uh, confidence here in his position. Yeah, when it, maybe Bishop e4, Bishop f3, Bishop f5, and take a quick GM draw. Based on our predictions, the 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 uh, the smarter chess stats sort of say that Serana should be better as the time controls get faster. We'll we'll see if that ends up being true or not. But right now, the first game of three minutes says. You know, one point for smarter chess. Hashtag take that Robert Hess. Can we get a hashtag yeah. take that Robert Hess trending on Twitter? <laughs> that would be fun. How often do you like give White a tempo to play H5 on purpose in the Sicilian? I don't know. <laughs> and then and then lose the bishop anyway. <laughs> Just never. Just never. What is going, dude? You called it. If Serrano loses this because of the Nidorf. Bishop D7 check. Should that be thrown? Why just winning a piece here? Yeah, yeah, White's up a piece, yeah. I'm just thinking how best to, to put him away. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, uh, he's probably considering, because he can just take e4 first and, and right. meet queen e3 check with queen e2, but... Then it's going to be knight f6, and so that's yeah. what he's sort of thinking, like, is knight f6 annoying, or do I just take that piece off the board, allow queen g3 check? Yeah. And, and he just decides be very that he's sure that there's no perpetual there. Run up to d2 and c3, I'm guessing. The run, florist, run. He's got to go to d3, not c3, right? Because rook c. Oh, yeah, c. you don't want to let... Well, I thought maybe I'd go all the way to b4 and a3, but now I, I realize you're right because the queen was taking e4 with check. All right, so... But, but look how awkward this is. This is... Yeah, where are we getting out? Is he going to play kings? I, let's analyze it. To the bat cave. He goes back to e2, but... Could he have gotten away with king c4, rook c8 check, and king b4? It looks like this is working out. His king's going to get through f2 now. Oh, very now. interesting. Yeah, he's... Uh, Magsulu instead is using the geometry, again, giving us a geometry lesson. f5. Working his way into a position where eventually the queen will be able to block any checks. Very, very nice. I like it. Yeah. But f5. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, to get away from the checks, he had to run his king to the open. So now he got yeah. Alexei's rooks involved, and it's not he can totally play simple either. One. And now take f5, I'm guessing. Now take f5, ooh. Shouldn't he have taken on e4, maybe? 
Well, it's, it would have been an end game, right? Taking g5, taking four. Let's let's analyze that. I guess. Yeah, I guess got the it's analysis not. board up. So if if no, takes e4, not. takes g5, takes f3, king e2, probably still winning for white, right? Yeah. There's knight d2 coming, and okay, so all yeah. right. Well, uh, you know, Mogsulu has defended, and looks like he's just going to be up a piece, and yeah. David Pruis's uh, surprise face continues, right? Do you have a surprise face? Like me? Yeah. Yeah, I got one. Oh, you have a surprise face. Serana. Oh, this is brutal. It's over. Trap the queen. Resign. Queens are coming off. White's just up a knight. Rook f1, I'm guessing. Take the rooks off. No, he wants more. Yeah. He wants the whole thing, just like you. He wants the whole thing. All right, and he wins. Yeah, and, uh been enough. Parham strikes back. We've now got a three-point lead once again, and the favorite in the match is is, is right now holding a three-point lead. Yeah, I, I'd be be curious to see if this continues what happens in Bullet because um, Serana, again, I, I do kind of agree with the smarter chess predictions as much as I make fun of them for a living. I think that <laughs> I think that probably Serana should be the favorite in faster time controls now, but you know, I don't know. How do you like the uh, Stonewall Dutch yourself, Danny? Oh, you know how I feel about the stone wall. Wait, you don't? Nope. How do you no, like it? Uh, good. <laughs> I don't like the stone wall. Don't like uh, it. I'm not. Well, I don't know. I mean, okay, it's it's uh it's a fun attacking opening, right? Hikaru would would say I'm wrong as usual. Okay. But um, I don't know. These positions to me always feel positionally good for white. It's a matter of time before we go full Kromnik. Move the knight from f3, eventually play pawn f3, punch through e4, Bob's your uncle on the light squares, don't forget to tip your waitress. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's how I play these positions. I remember the first time I saw someone do that with white, put the knight from f3 on d3 and play f3 e4, and I was like, yeah. well, You're now like, I know how be to good. beat this opening every single time. <laughs> right. No, <laughs> but, and, and... But then I saw the Magnus take it up at one point. Yeah, uh, but, but mainly in rapid, remember. right? It was like a brief phase, but he like... I mean, he yeah, was. He played. There was the game with Wesley So. That's what you're referring to, right? He played it as black against yeah. Wesley So. Yeah, and I think against Anand and won like two games and was just completely untouchable. Yeah, he would play like b6, and you know, bishop b7, rook c8, c5. He did a few different things. Yeah. So there's always more levels. You like you think you know an opening, you think right. you know a person, and then you, you find you out there's guy. more to them. Yeah. Bishop takes d6, and now you're going to use the e5 square. I like mm -hmm. it. And I still like white. I like the fact that f3 Same. and e4 is coming. It looks this like is... it should still be great for white. Yeah. This, but f3 and, is kind of Parham, a middle move too, right? Like I feel like Parham's smiling here. This is not... Okay, it's a happy Parham because he's a happy guy, but this is not because he loves his position. No, it looks like he's he's doing some thinking here. I don't think yeah, there's any sound actually coming out of his mouth. I think he's just kind of whispering ideas to himself. Sweet nothing. Okay. So maybe a4, b5 for white is more enticing to me than f3. f3 is like a little committal kind of blocks in my bishop, and then I don't yet have control over e4 to follow it up, so why did I put my pawn on f3? Uh -huh. Yeah, and I like this patient move, rook c1. But, okay, the, the positional tragedies that are possible for the stone wall, let's, okay, we know yeah. and we've acknowledged that, you know, okay, probably not as bad as I thought it was. Magnus has played it. And now we're going to see Parham try to get an attack to, to justify the position. But if All we right. were putting on a positional clinic for white, you would want to remove the dark square bishop, as as white has done here. Check. Con <laughs> control these squares and then eventually pry open the Check. light squares because all these pawns that have committed themselves are potentially potential doors in, into a weak king on the light squares, potential doors to other things. So so this C5's is going... big question. That's a big question. Can he go to b5? Well, I think this is kind of going according to plan for white. Even if you go to b5, white might play queen b2, and then how do you deal with a4? Yeah, I don't know. That's why I asked, can you go there? <laughs> I guess yeah. you're saying maybe not. Well, no, he does. I guess Let's you kind of need the tempo. You need to gain a tempo on d4. Oh. You're going to put your knight on a7? He's just going to hunker down and let his knight get kicked? I love it. <laughs> You love it because you're in you're you're dreaming this whole position as white, right? Yeah, Everything I am. I mean, I think white plays knight f2. You get e4. Whoa, f4. Is that that's not, not part of the script, huh? That's not part of the script. That's not part of the beat the stonewall script. 
I really don't like that move. And I know, again, it's dangerous for us to criticize these guys. But I don't think that was the right approach for White at all. I mean, Knight F2 to me was the was the Karyakin script, the Kromnik script. Put, I'm going to back up to the Batcave and show this one real quick. Yeah, yeah. Show us the, the real script because... Uh, this is how the movie what, was supposed to go. What he did. And then play for E4. This is this is how the movie was supposed to go. Instead, we've got a twist ending on the board. Mm -hmm. By the way, I, I really don't like this. I think that Parham's going to get H5. The attack is coming. I, I don't like this at all. Uh oh, H5 is scary, man. He's to me, the problem is that Saran is not doing anything. Like, if he's not playing B5, yep. if he's not playing E4. Yeah, this is. You know, we've talked about Serrano being up on the clock, but you've mentioned a few times he's taken, like, no time on moves, and he took very little time to go for this F4 idea, which is a huge positional decision. And, yes, yeah. he's up on the clock here, but I, I think White's position is... Okay, if not if not much worse, it's much worse than it was. This is exactly how you don't want to play a Stonewall, and I will give myself the, the legs to say it, even though these guys are much stronger, that that was, that was not the right approach by White. What is that for? Ooh. Yeah, here comes ninety four. Mong Sulu has the H file. His knight's basically trapped on D three if he takes this. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's rough. Back to <laughs> back to the H file with the king. Wow, we're gonna have something nasty come, and and Serrano's not gonna be happy. Is he gonna trade nasty. on D four now? This knight will still have to block the rook on the second rank if he takes on e4. Lose the pawn on g3. I'm not seeing any way to defend that pawn on g3. Yeah, let's let's analyze it and see what happens if the king if the king tries to run. Okay, and he's he's going for it, so I guess I hardly need to analyze it. Um Okay, Queen H2 looks uh, <laughs> like it just poses the same question he hasn't answered yet again. A2, thank you. Ooh, nice A5, nice A5. He wants to make sure that White can't get a draw by locking things up completely. If he had to win the whole game just through the H file, that wouldn't quite be enough. So A5, super good timing for converting this as black. Um, let's see. Let's see how easy this is to, to win this game or not. Because Yeah, White's down the exchange is it's kind of not the worst thing to have here, right? What's that? I mean, you're down the exchange, no. but yeah. totally close position. Yeah, insofar as the position is locked, you have sort of drawing chances. If the bishop on c8 can never get out, then black can never really outnumber you on your side of the board. Yep. And there's and sometimes, if... you know, they say in bullet how valuable the knight is, right? This isn't bullet, but it is a time scramble. This may be a big mistake. He was, I, I was like, he's thinking about a6. He's thinking yeah. about maybe winning the game. He wants to get aggressive, but. Yeah, that may be the, the ill-advised approach. Here comes the rook on the h file. In fact, is it just mate? Are you happy to see me? How do you stop it? Uh, king F2. And, and you run. Check king E1. I mean, it's not going to work out. <laughs> You're going to get mated. My knight's coming yeah. into E4, right? Wow. Serana. Yeah. That's that's a... Uh, boom, boom. Shocker. Knight. Here comes knight E4, and it's, and it's going to be over. Oh, wait. He's got his own checkmate with knight takes D7. Oh, maybe he did, but he didn't go for it. He well, didn't go for it, but did you see that was checkmate? That? <laughs> Wait, who's mating who? He's gonna set. He's settling on the draw. Now he thinks he's got a perpetual, right? But the king can run to d8, and he's out. And black mates him. Yeah. Oops. Oh my gosh! It's crazy. Danny, I think he missed he a win. seven. No, but it doesn't matter. The king runs to c8 or e8, and he gets no. out. But wasn't knight d7 like winning for white? I think so. We're gonna have to back up and take a look. We have to, we they, have to know because that's such a big yeah, deal. They're gonna get going on the next game, but we're gonna take a quick look over here, everybody, and and show you what. So again, move to five. Um. Okay, in this position, after knight e4, instead of rook a7, knight takes d7. There's no immediate checks for for black, and the threat is 
knight to b6 followed by knight takes c6. Although, is that actually mate, David? If knight takes g3, knight b6 yeah. check, king, king seven, d8. King f8, knight d7, king g8, knight f6. Knight f6, the king goes back to f8. We may still only have a draw. May still only have a draw. Crazy. Yeah. Still, I would take that draw over the loss yeah, what at this a, point. Yeah, what a bananas position here. This is... Uh... Another win for Mogsulu, pushing it to the largest lead of the day if you're just joining us. That's four, a four point lead is the biggest yeah. that he's had. And yeah. uh, he's looking so strong right now, Danny. So strong. And he's done with E4. He's done with E4. Yeah, goes away from it. Quit while he was ahead. He, he, he decided that he wasn't going to continue to risk it. Uh, but. <laughs> I, I'm gonna guess we'll see it. We'll see it come back to it. But right now, yeah. I mean, it's 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 hard to say that, um, you know, ever whenever the person has a lead that they didn't get themselves there. But it feels a little bit like Serana is off form. Um, this last F4 idea on that stone wall was like, I mean, that was just completely positionally bogus. White was on track to do what you're supposed to do in those structures and just just handed Mogsulu a kingside attack on the H file. Um. Anyway, surprising yeah. stuff right now. Yeah. Serana seems to really know what he's doing on the black side of the closed openings, though. I mean, E4 really sort of changed the whole match around for Meg Sudlu. Yep. Yeah, he, he played E4, got his wins in the Nidorf, uh, gone away from it now, but... Uh... He just, Mog Sulu just feels like he's like poking and prodding at Serana's repertoire and just and just coming out successfully. <sighs> Serana, Serana right now repeating the things he's played all match, but he's down. So yeah. at some point you start to wonder if you got to mix it up yourself. Hmm. I'm not sure why he felt obliged to trade off the A file and play this so passively. Unless he did this on purpose. Yeah, because Serana has been quite aggressive. Maybe he did this on purpose to go after C3. Like he thought this could come out well for him. So Knight C5. Knight, knights. Knight wanted to get to A4. Wow. So he's picking up some. He's picking, picking up a pawn. Actually, this is this has transitioned pretty well for Serana. Yeah. I mean, you always have to worry about the rook coming into the eighth rank, right? So C5 yeah. is not. Not the easiest Peshka to grab. But, right, rook uh, c5, rook e8 is pretty poison. Yeah. So you, you move the bishop, but but now if white wants to, you can... I, I was going to say maybe you go into a7 and try to work on the b7 pawn, but maybe there's no way to remove the knight. Um, yeah. Knight b1. I like it. You know where it's headed. Mm -hmm. It's d2. d2. Look at that. Working it. Backdoor style. Here comes the knight, and oh, now he'll play tickle on c3. Um, Will he trade on f3 maybe first? No. Yeah, he take he likes your idea. So the positional the positional uh, issue here for white is if you end up getting nothing, and all that happens that's, that's... is the c5 and b7 pawns are traded, then black not only has good winning chances because he's up a free pawn, but it's it's a, a knight knight duo with all the pawns on yes. one side of the board, which which really yes. makes these weaknesses easier to target. So this is definitely looking like Serana's chance to just... And look at the time. It's so weird, right? Magsulu's up on the clock, which he hasn't really done in a lot of games he's won. Now right. he's up on the clock, and I think he's just worse. Yeah. I can't figure this one out, David. I'm perplexed. Yeah, I don't know where the knight's headed after rook a3. We still have a decent amount of time before the, the bullet gets underway. So um, we see some people there. Diamond member Veni Vidivici saying that uh, the bullet is coming up. We still got a little bit of time here. If you're with us, one of the 5,000, thank you for being here. We love you. Appreciate it. Thank you to everybody doing work to help this show amazing. All the mods, all the, all the, uh, the people behind the scenes. Thank you so much. I like to think in the middle of a show rather than the end of the show, David. Is that okay with you? Yeah. It just makes me feel better. Orin, is that okay with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
You know, Danny, he, I've, he hates me. I've realized over the course of all of these shows that working with you, pretty much anything and everything just has to be okay. <laughs> you don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Came with the Java description. I think Eric, when he when he said like, if you're gonna join Danny, like, are you okay with butchered accents, bad dad yeah. jokes, right? You know, I'm gonna be honest. I think you put that in my introductory. Yeah, I email. think I did actually. Like, hey, you know. Anyway, but I kind of uh, demanded that I get a ride in a DeLorean right. when I got hired. So, I, uh, hop, yeah. hop in the DeLorean. He's hanging out in chat. Anyway, thank you everybody for being here. We're having a great time. This match, I think, is far from over. I know it's a four-game lead, but Serana, did he? Okay, right as I say that, I thought Black was doing well, but is Serana getting his knight in trouble on B1. That that pony's running out of squares here. Yeah, I mean it. I don't think that there's any way for Parham to like surround it and attack it. Right, he hasn't yet threatened to win it at any point, but um, but Saran is struggling to try and like get it out in order to convert this pawn that he snatched. Yeah. <laughs> People wondering who the voice of what that guy that was Arn, the producer, the voice of God. <laughs> that <laughs> hey like, Danny, this is your conscience speaking. Yeah. Uh, all right, D five is gonna fall, so White's getting some counterplay back, but Black is, I think doing that on purpose. What is his idea? He's got he's got ideas to to maybe bring the rook down. Yep. Okay, he's coming to a2 to so use the d2 square. I don't know though. I mean, Moxulu again, he's down on the clock, but he's got himself back into a much much more of a coin flip position than it was earlier. Black was yeah, yeah. kind of a clean pawn. Yeah, he's he's in this and now we basically just get a taste of what the bullet section might be like because it's exactly. just not decided and they're just going to they're just going to play bullet from here. Nice move there. Knight a4, c5 is falling. Yeah, knight b7 maybe would have been best to just get a, get a pawn off of the queen yeah. side and have a little less to worry about. Yeah, I agree. That was that was kind of an odd choice because now he's down two. Okay, he's not down two pawns. I'm sorry, because he won no. the pawn back. But it feels that way because these double pawns are so bad. Yeah, let's see how he knight handles seven, this. King f7. Right. And then uh, is the Where b pawn. Headed? He wants to right? play pawn e4. Got Set a baby girl coming me. on B1. Yeah, just run that p pawn. King E6, E4 doesn't help black at all, so just yeah, go note with this. There, note there was no knight D6 check to win the B5 pawn there, everybody, because king E6 forked, forked the rook and knight. So if, if, for those of you who were calculating that. Now, okay, uh, the rook ending. That probably increases white's drawing chances. Um, yeah. Still in a bit of a of an odd spot because your rook is completely tied down to the b pawn. Oh yeah. Look at this little trick. He's preventing black from bringing the king up. Oh, but, oh, he's not. The skewer is a fake. Yeah. False alarm. There Very is nice no skewer. Very nice endgame technique. Wow. Queen g1 right. looks good. To g4. Serana. Whew. Serana that was making smooth. his move right now. What's that? I like. I just like that game. That just yeah. felt. That felt like a really clean game for him from start to finish. Am I wrong? No, you're right. So, so, I mean, Serana really strikes back. The skewer is real. There is no skewer. And, uh, okay, I'm going to get a feeling that this stone wall is going to be a good stone wall for White. He's not going to mess this thing up with F4 anymore. He didn't blow your confidence with that last game? I mean, you I mean, either know the plans or you don't, right? Yeah, he was. Fr it was frustrating. I th I think he miscalculated something. I think he thought f4 was super strong for some reason, and it just it was far from it. Because mm -hmm. I would I would bet that Serrano is very aware of. I mean, he's a good Russian schoolboy, right? He knows he knows how to pry himself open a positional a positional breakthrough, right? They they yeah, they, they come been... they come out of the womb knowing how to do that stuff. In positionally, Russia. he's been pretty flawless today. Other than that judgment yeah. there, I guess, right? Like. There have been a tactical blip or two here or there, but no positional mishaps. Yeah, I agree. And now he's got knight d3. We're going to get the same the same dark square transition. Well, we can see that Parham... Sorry, I paused for a second because like, the b-pawn was hanging for a second, but rook b1, yeah. rook b7 and stuff. So. This is... Is this the? Ex oh, he played c5 a little earlier. Last game we saw yeah. knight fe5. I, I think it was the exact... Yep. The exact same line, right? Knight, knight yeah. fe5 would have been... Yeah. yeah. The previous game, they'd trade bishops first, so b4 was never hanging for a second. So, but he also played knight e5 first, so... Yeah. Interesting. 
So we'll see if this time he goes for the the more appropriate positional breakthrough with F3 and E4. I, I like the way he played last game. I mean, now he, he's taking a different approach. Whoa. Um, but he can I've take G4 and play. I have not seen this black before. Knight to G4. I have not seen that. I, I'm not a huge fan. Okay, Knight to D7? Maybe. Knight G4. <laughs> wow. I guess what? if white declines the trade, then you're in better position to do your thing. Here you come know, all why, the pawns. Why would you not take and play E4? Like, what is his aversion to the... What is what is wrong with the right move E4? What's wrong with E4? <laughs> I don't I get don't it. Know. I, I mean, am I am I crazy here? I don't know. I, I don't know. Crazy, I've heard people say like, surely? if this is wrong, I don't want to be right. But this right. was like, if this is right, I want to do it wrong or something. I yeah, don't know exactly. And now Black is getting the attack that you want. Yeah. H5 looks playable. Oh, queen g6, queen g7, queen h5. Not playable. Okay, you've okay. got queen e2 here. A fork on g4 and e6. Yeah. Uh, he finds it's it. hard to cover squares like that at the same time. e6 and g4. Geometrically. Right. Not many pieces that you can do that. You need a light that. square bishop to do that. You need a piece on f5. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I wonder if uh, Par. I think Parham just missed that, judging by his body language. Um, All right, Queen check, Queen f five. Get back to your yeah. technical roots. Yeah. Somebody saying in Twitch chat, Serrano's finding his groove, and Virtuich saying he better, and I and I agree, right? I mean, now's the time. You've got, um, I believe I believe about twenty five minutes left here in the three minute portion. Um, yeah. If you try and think about the strengths and weaknesses that the two players have showed so far today. Yep. And and you can correct me if I'm remembering this stuff wrong, but I feel like um Serrano's end games have looked pretty good and his tactics have been a little shaky a couple of times. Agreed. So I feel like yeah. if he got the queens off, he's probably pretty comfortable there. Well, and and even though I think his his time management overall, I'm usually in favor of someone being up on the clock, especially in a right. blitz a blitz match like this. It's something you want to do, but in in a lot of critical moments, he's played a little too fast, right? Mm -hmm. That's fair to say for sure. And and so that you know that's that's it, it would also be a criticism along with maybe maybe not being tactically as sharp as as uh, as you would think, but um. Okay, right. we'll see so, if that ends up paying so off in full. Plus, bullet. he's played fast. Minus, he's played fast. Yep. <laughs> plus, the end games have been pretty clean, and uh, allowing some tactics here, like this. That's a Knight tactic. Takes F2. Can he take just, with the king? Yeah, Bogsulu just tricky, right? A lot like his uh, countryman Feruja, just just really really never missing an opportunity for a for a sneaky tactic, and I I don't think. Oh. Uh, so if king f2, f takes g3 check. If the king retreats to g1, queen h2 is mate. Yeah, let, let's analyze comes it. comes out so, to g3. King, if king takes f2, we've got f takes g3. As you said, if you walk out, you lose the queen. Then it's got to be rook e3 Wait. check, I think. Yeah, rook e3 check, but then I can take and play rook f3. Because on rook g8, white would have rook takes rook, right? On e8, so. Yeah, um, that's... Rook e3, check, rook takes, queen takes, rook f3. I don't see time for black to win there either. Huh. Yeah, interesting. So Sarana's going to try to think and, and call his bluff. Mogsulu also calculating a mile a minute right now. Because it's actually... Uh, shout out to uh, Grandmaster Vita Gujarathi showing up in the Twitch chat saying he predicts a win by Monk Sulu. But look, Serrano believes him and backs up to F3. But did we really solve this? If takes F2, takes I G3, didn't. King takes G3, maybe he just he was just afraid. Nah, he can't be just afraid. He thought right? for a minute. A minute. That's like if King takes F2 wins, my minute will be worth it. You got to go for it, right? If King takes F2 wins, you got to. No, I agree. Um, but he didn't. If he was planning to just be afraid, he wouldn't have put the time in. All right, this threatens knight d2. On gf4, knight d2 is good. Um, yeah, this knight takes it. Well, he... Check, so. If it worked, whether it worked or not, it worked for Mogsulu. He stole a pawn like a thief and backed up the knight, and now the position right. is completely turning around. Yeah, now he cracks the g3 square, and it is a mess. You have to like black just based on the last few moves, the way that went, yeah. winning the pawn back. But time pressure yeah. is, is going to matter again. Yeah. 
could go any which way. E3 is weak here. So Queen E3 this... check coming, and you'd like you'd like to put something wait. on G4, keep the attack going, but White's got to stop on that for now. Maybe Rook F4. Uh huh. Bring the Rook up. Stop ideas of the Queen getting in. Yeah, Rook F4 could make sense. Whoa, Ooh, totally wow. different angle. He wants G5. This is pretty dramatic. He wants G5. And now who wants the queen trade? Not me. But I, I'm biased, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> he takes there. Oh, can he... Wait, was taking F6 winning a piece? No, the no, queen... No, he lost the exchange. Huh. The I tricked you. Back, you barely yeah. passed. Barely passed. That pawn on G5 is... Uh... That's a target. Yeah. Not looking yeah, healthy. Yeah, this is, this is completely backfired for Serana. He's losing A4. Yeah. He's... The knight is the knight is just working it. But in good news, his end game technique is fantastic. So maybe he'll come up with something here. The c6 pawn is on a light square. That gives this bishop hope of being important. If he can, oh look at that move, rook a3, poking, yeah. taking yeah. away squares from the knight. He's got looking for his chance to get him. Now he's now overwhelming the rook. He's gonna oh, oh, rook f2, f2 check. What it's what a what an important little tempi there. Yeah. But the bishop will come to d7 and it's still it's still weird. Yep. Still weird in g7. Rook g7. H5 is falling. No. Wow, what a this is this is time scramble galore. Somebody's a move yeah. away from blundering. Just don't know who yep. it's gonna be. <laughs> but it's coming up. It's coming up. It's gonna be a blunder. Don't go anywhere, everybody. All right. Wow, look at the deep one. Uh. Uh, uh. It was a forky moat, so he stopped it. Got to get the rook back. The rook h1. Rook right, d1. Now the D1's a little bit thought, advanced. Oh, rook d1 would have allowed rook d3. That's how I would have blundered. Whew. Rook h6 check. Or king e3. Okay, he goes king e3. Perhaps even Couple better. seconds each. Whoa. Why'd the king go there? Dude, if rook takes c5, there's king d4. Oh my gosh. What is going on here? King d4, is that not... There's still this weird King d4 moment. I think White's winning. I mean, he's only got one second. He barely played that move, but he's won a piece. So Rana no. has figured out a way out of that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, he's not. He's not figuring no. a way out. Uh, it's going to be a draw. King takes d2, draw. Rook takes d1. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> what a wild way for that one to end. I'm kind of glad nobody flagged, Danny. <laughs> <sighs> Man. I think this is the first draw of the match, Danny. Is it? Is it really? I think we went 13 games without a draw. Wow. We'll I get think. our we'll get our stats all over that. Yeah, I mean they'll correct us if we're wrong, right? Yeah, but that I think you might be right. I think that was the first draw, not not because of lack of trying, right? And uh, you you and I were predicting a blunder that never really never really came. I mean, yeah, pretty well, amazing. Well, he kind of like hung that bishop b3, king d4. He lost yeah. his piece. He just yeah, just, Serana was so low on pawns he couldn't convert that. Yeah, crazy. Um, um okay. Well, oh. D five looks like a nice improvement on the previous H four game. Where yeah, G4, D5, G5 you're happened. not supposed to allow D five. This is this is Serana finally finally telling telling Mog Sulu that he knows more Knight or theory than than him. Yeah, like, hey, that H pawn's looking stupid now. Yeah, it's it's a bullet H pawn. Yeah, he's like, you know, I could play H six. I could play Bishop wow. G two. I'll yeah, just that was the first my draw. knight and like ask you how many times you're going to keep moving this age bond. Vidit, Vidit Chess in the Twitch chat, Vidit Gujarati saying that uh, Serana being careless when he's got a better position and, and without it, probably the score is closer. I tend to agree. I think that yeah. he's he's choosing plans that are a little bit dismissive of, of Magsulu's counterplay. We highlighted the, the misplayed Dutch. Even in that game, there was, there was some advantage that he's letting slip. So, Yeah, um, that game just now was a good example. He was up upon... Yep. And he plays queen g4, allowing this knight takes f2. He had other moves in the position. Queen h3, queen d7 were <laughs> available. I don't think I'm struggling to pronounce Moksudlu, perpetual stalemate, but in general, I do root for the easier to pronounce name. You're not wrong. So Yeah. Um, all right. Well, black is black is in good shape here, having gotten d5 in a Sicilian. Often, often your positional goal. Yeah. Um... So what do you do now? I mean, the H pawn is looking silly, as you said. Magsulu maybe going to try to force the end game. If you don't like the middle game, try the end game. Right. Is that like if first you don't succeed, try again? Yep. 
And look, the end game bears immediate fruits in a bishop pair. A very nice dark squared bishop pair. I love that guy on C5. Checkmate Carlson, platinum member in the Chess TV chat, saying in that last game, if king takes g3 in that crazy sack line, there's rook takes e1 and rook g8, but that's not true, because if rook takes e1, white's playing rook takes f8, check, yep. in, in between it, right? Yep. Uh, but then point. there's queen takes f8, so maybe he was right, because the queen was actually guarding f8. Oh, that was the move that we that missed. That was the move. So checkmate Carlson, platinum member, you were right. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for that, yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like uh, Parham's getting to work here. He's got yep. nice structure on the queen side. Nice pawn on h6. And this is how good Sicilians can go wrong, right? I mean, the white got... Yeah. Uh, or black got d5, excuse me, but with with a simple approach, white does have this endgame of a potential 3-on-2 advantage. The bishop pair... So, I mean, I think the position is, is close to equal. I don't know if I had to guess, but but maybe I'm underestimating that bishop b6 and the dark squares are going to be harder for black to deal with than I think. I think black's in danger, but we'll find out. I mean, there's the rook h5 idea, which he stops now dealing with. There's the bishop b6 idea you mentioned. There's the whole queenside majority moving eventually. And there it is. Here comes b4. Trying to get but d4. But I'm thinking there the was going to be knight e5. Whenever the knight comes to e5, then there's like a rook trade and bishop d4. Knight e5, you're saying rook trade and bishop d4, indeed. Yeah. Okay, Mug, wait, is there, there's no tactics on c4, okay. Um, I always get, you know me, getting really excited about a piece sack. Knight yeah. d3. Oh, you know what, he's going for the obstacle bishop kind of transition. If you take everything on d3, mm -hmm. I think black will play rook e4. I'm mm -hmm. guessing. I think he's taking everything and playing rook e4. Yeah. But then you can just... white play bishop d4 first? Okay. Yeah, or doesn't... even after rook e4, you can play bishop d4 with check. Yeah. All right, so Serrano is just trying to kind of hold hold this position now, submitting to being worse. Otherwise, you don't go into an obstacle bishop ending down a pawn. Yeah, yeah. So, For sure. Okay, bishop e8 forces rook a1, I think. You want to keep the pawns with some flexibility to play b5. Right. And that's an obstacle bishop endings, everybody. You don't you don't really want to play something like a5 and let your pawns just be completely locked on dark squares where... Yeah, so you play rook a1 because you're hoping at some point you can still coordinate a breakthrough on the light squares. Yeah. But, but black looks like he's holding. In fact... King Probably. g6 maybe comes next, and, and mm -hmm. is this white rook being overwhelmed, David, to guard both a4 and h6? Yeah, I mean, there may it may not be possible for black to get the h-pawn scot-free. Something may come right. come in, but but it does feel like... Uh, Ooh, look at this. He's given up a4 for counterplay. He wants yeah, rook it does e6 feel like check. he has to give something up. Okay. Now on rook okay. e7, he's got rook d7. That's key, so... Yeah, very very nice. That that would guard everything along the seventh rank. Yeah, and you know we we kind of called out uh, Serana for for playing for too much in that weird game with the double rooks on the H file. Remember, David? Mm -hmm. And with only uh, twenty seconds, I'm wondering if we're going to be calling out Magsulu for the same thing. Like he's really going all in here. I know it's an obstacle bishop position, but but I don't know. I mean, I think there's some risk here if you're not careful. And maybe I'm maybe I'm seeing ghosts, but Bishop B five threatens Rook D three. Ooh, he allows it. Yeah, he doesn't take it. I mean, he's also got like the nineteen seconds, right? So if something goes wrong, uh, Serrano will be able to convert it. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, there's. I'm wondering if there's some. Okay, it's it's it should be straightforward. White can probably not really lose with obscode bishops, but but now Black has won the pawn back. Black's king mm -hmm. is more active, and Magsudu only has fifteen seconds. Yeah, I guess the bishop on f4 kind of holds everything. There's not really yeah. anything for black to attack, nowhere to make okay. a pass pawn. So maybe there's just there's just not enough for black, perhaps. Although h6 is falling now. If you play yeah, rookie seven, five sort of self trapped. Yeah, you're you're gonna. I mean, take you probably don't have any winning chances, but you're gonna take h6 anyway. Yeah, might as well might as well eat that pawn. Bishop e4. Yeah, holds everything. 
Yeah. yeah and now you've got to play a million moves on this. This is so. Okay. Nice. Now, now I think it's finally going to be a draw. It. Okay. He did it. He, he he managed to hold even with just a few seconds. You see Serana kind of kind of shift in his seat, saying, "All right, all right, all right." Yeah. Right? Now the floodgates are open. Draws just pouring in. Draws draws are pouring in. He's like, "Okay, I get it. You defended. I get it." Um, yeah. So Serana doesn't doesn't play this one out forever. Not yeah. you know, not that he should, but I, I keep coming back to who's going to be better in bullet. We're getting into our final series of three minute games here before the bullet starts. And I see some of you have been asked about the format. Shout out to Chess Bay. Thanks for answering questions for everybody there. It is 90 minutes of five minute, 60 minutes of three minute, 30 minutes of bullet. The same dog and pony dance we've been doing here for a while because it's pretty cool. So welcome yeah. to the Speed Chess Championship. Serana switching up his approach to this uh, stone wall with pawn to b3 and knight to c3 instead of d2. I, um, and, and even though he was good in those positions, it's so weird to me. I just, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him about it and be like, "Yo, where was your Russian schoolboy? You know, Bodvinik was rolling over in his grave. What's the deal, dude? What happened to e4? I'm gonna go hard after him. Soviet chess school style, David. All right, you into it? It's good. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. You should, you should do it. I, I, I always don't understand. Like I mean, this whole approach here, and now with e three. I mean, this is, this is not what you're supposed to do in a stone wall. And um, Black is getting, getting what he wants in these games, even though it's not because White can't go for those types of plans. Queen B two to try and get the knight here. to e five at any cost, but Bishop A six actually prevents it. He could. And you mentioned Carlson playing these B six ideas in these Dutch. This is sort of similar to one of those games. I mean, I like Black's chances here. This is this is how you can work both sides of the board for pressure. And this idea that Magsudlu has executed well in all these stone walls to go for G five and launch a kingside attack. Yeah. It's just uh, Serrano doesn't seem to have the right approach here. So now he's going to go for knight e five probably. Maybe with the knight trade on e four first. 94, FE4, 95. It's just Wait, not that good. Finally going for F3 and E4? Finally? Oh, really on the back foot. I mean, F3, E4 is not really any good, is it? His pieces well, are off on the coin. Probably not anymore, there. but even here, just to like, okay, to the bat cave real quick, just, just to analyze what maybe could have been. Even, even here, with black getting what seems to be all the cards on the king side, the pressure, if you play F3 and the knight backs up, even if you just go for E4, Okay, it doesn't look so good. But my point is, if the position starts to open up, you're hoping to get access to this king. And I guess yeah. here the main point, as you're saying, David, is is black. Yeah, black just has totally prevented it. So now you don't now you don't get anything. Yeah. So he's gonna try to. He plays knight d3. But where's the plan here for white? You you completely I, lost sight of what you're supposed to, have, to be doing. He just doesn't seem to have a plan at all against this uh, stone wall today. You can't play rookie one to try to go for it because the bishop on a6 is a thorn in your shoe. Right. I, Basically, he's just going to like plunk 94 and 95 now, two moves later after playing 91 to d3 instead right. of from f3. Yeah, he didn't like and, didn't like taking e4 and playing 95. That was I'll show the line David was talking about. Back in this position, he was saying take and play here, which I agree. That would have been better than what Serrano's done. Um, I mean, he just doesn't have any ideas. Serrano, you know... Doesn't have doesn't have the right approach here against the Stonewall, but credit to Mug Sulu if he I, we'll ask him obviously if this is something he considered playing for, mm -hmm. um, in preparation for the match or if it's something he just kind of came up with. But he's been flexible and kind of bouncing around, trying more things. F4 played to try yeah. to get a knight to e5, and Mog Sulu yeah. says no, thank you. I'll get rid yeah, of that Bishop guy. d3 for sure. If White gets to play knight e5, it's the same as that b5, knight b6, knight c4 that we talked about in the last. Yep. Queen's Gambit structure from the black side, you know. That knight on e5 would really stop what black wants to do. So now the one weakness white has an eye on is c6. So you're mm -hmm. taking, I think, to try to clear up a c file. Some Absolutely. doubled intentions. What do you think? What's Mike Sulu doing here? I think he's going... <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you were, but you didn't say it out loud, so it's okay. Yeah, I was gonna say F e four. Leave that bishop yep. on on g two as like a worse piece than the knight as far as maneuvering, yep. and play for h five h four, trying to just crack that whole kingside open. 
Now it's a big question. You, you, okay, no, sorry, it wasn't. Uh, Serana couldn't even take with the E-Pawn because D4 was just falling immediately, and I was going to say yeah. that this is not what I want. Now I'm getting puzzle rush intentions in my head. I want Rook G8. I want to put the Knight on F2 and just call it a day. I want mate. I want mate on that king side. What was happening on Bishop B5 last move or this move? I mean... Oh, the pawn is pinned. Yeah. Very interesting. I have this idea as well. Um... I like it actually. Okay, he's. I mean, now Black's got Rooks doubling on the G file more easily. I'm not sure that Bishop A6 was helping him there. We've got a rare time advantage for Maxud Lu here. Yeah, not not much, but uh... yeah. But yeah, JD Cannon is saying that he saw the Bishop B5 idea, but he said it after you said it, so he doesn't get credit. Haha, <laughs> JD, back mm -hmm. to the drawing board. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not chatting. I have to wait for Danny to be done before I say my ideas. I know. And he's trying to get a word in with me. You try <laughs> being in David's shoes. I mean, yeah. come on, JD. Speed up. It um, is the speed chess championships. King H. I like this move, dude. He's guarding H5. Maybe because he also wants the D5 square for the knight, right? Yeah. I want to play like Bishop B7 at some point, Danny, as my weird way to attack the C6 pawn. Dude, I love that idea. Like, I love it as a sack. Yeah. Okay, to the bat cave, real quick. Okay, I well, mean, he, he does go for the knight d5 as we thought, but now I'm, I'm going to actually, we're going to the bat cave anyway, because I'm going to show it. Well, now because, it's like really possible. Yeah, because... now it's really a threat. So if black does something <laughs> random, everybody, this is a like move rook that. Rook g8. Rook g8's not too random, you know? Right, and and you can't take it because rook takes c6, but look at Mug Sulu finding knight b4. So Ooh. he he kind of had his eye on that prize and, and, and stopped stopped yeah. all these c file threats. Now white's like totally discord in Nitsyatsk. That's Russian for discoordinated. Posi uh, d you were supposed to say Pozitsia at the end, right? Discoordinated position. But yeah. Oh, yeah. But hey, no, you, you know, you're busting out Russian. How many languages you speak again? Like 17? <laughs> Definitely not Russian. But it's up there on your priority list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Can White double rooks on the C file and try to play queen take C6? One idea. And he's he's doing it. He wants there it is. In fact, you can't. No, you you There's can't do it. There's one check, right? You won. All right, back to the bat cave. Got to show it again. Real He's nice like, combo I know about this up. chestnut. I got to show it. If queen takes c6, takes takes. Black has rook g1. Oop. Rook g1, forcing the defender away and holding. So okay. Instead, we're not seeing those tactics. Instead, we're uh, we're trying to hold the g file if we're white. But, I think it's really good for for Serana that he managed to trade his bishop for that knight. Yeah, I think uh, I think that knight was going to outperform his his bishop in most scenarios. So, oh, Maxulu's being real tricky over there. He's got something yeah. up his sleeve on the G file. Threats of rook G one, and then queen of three with mate. Yep. Uh, how do you deal queen with that? H three here. Oh no! But now rook G two. Yeah, I don't queen think, I don't H3 think this... was I think. The way to go. Wow, look at Mogsulu on the prowl for a mating attack. He's gonna have to take with check here. Take with check, but the king takes and then There's what? two seconds for his opponent. He's only got two seconds. <sighs> wow, I didn't even realize they're both under five seconds. They're I need to start paying attention. Under. Okay, but there may be a pro oh he's got rook g6 blocking the check. Yep. He's Holy got rook bleeper now. snaps. He flags, right? Oh he my flags. god, and Serana is pissed. Six. Wow. Okay, we got to show why that game ended. Wow, what an amazing <laughs> find! The final position for those who, who didn't see what we were what we were barking about. The point is that there is no more checks coming to the Black King because any check, rook or queen, allows this rook to come back, block the check, and actually deliver checkmate in one move. It's checkmate on the king on h1. Just absolutely Danny, fantastic if chest there if he hadn't gone for queen c1 yeah um Mixudlu was maneuvering in to play rook g1 check queen takes g1 queen f3 he was setting up a whole like evil mating thing yeah so yeah he was setting up an idea where he forces the queen c1 in the counterplay yeah let's show i'll just make a random move to show that because the queen comes to g4 the rook makes a random move and now when you check because the queen's here you can't take with the king queen guards it so you take with the queen, and then queen f3 and mate. So Mug Sulu, even though it kind of ended in, you know, fantastical fashion, surprising us, looked like looked like a blunder by Serana, but I think Mug Sulu was winning that the entire time. What a... Dude, he was that down was... to his last second, but he was still, like, 
playing like the the good moves, you know, Dude, not just that, like that was baller. He, had, he was living off the increment and still conducting a high level mating attack. Yeah. Tag Vaughn with the resub. We love you, buddy. All right. What's this opening? A new kind of Queen's Gambit declined. We haven't really seen yet in this match. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Haven't seen much of this yet. I'm sorry. I'm just sitting here. I'm just time he had on the clock to kind of, you know, search. Yeah. Wow. Haven't seen much of this yet. I'm sorry. I'm just sitting here. I'm just time he had on the clock to kind of, you know, surgically develop that mating net against the White King. Yeah. So, um, Saran is down, um, down four games for the second time this match. And actually, two times in history have people come back from being down four points yeah. in a speed chess championship match. So That's... it is still possible, but that is uh, the furthest the furthest anyone's ever been down and come back. If he loses yeah. another game, then he's over the precipice of what we've ever seen. Yeah, I was just to say, you're touching on a kind of a, a must-win storyline, right, for Serrano, right? Yeah. Do doesn't want to cross into that five-point deficit range where no one has ever come back. He does want to put his bishop on h2 though he's like this looks like a queen's yeah, gambit you know, let's, hey. <laughs> let's throw in our little check i've done that a few times as white maybe tried his black if he plays Boom. bishop h2 oh my god yeah. he plays bishop and then h2. He like, he knows, like he, why he <laughs> so funny <laughs> he's just misplacing your king and letting you know that he can mess with him right yeah he's like letting the king on h1 know like, like who's the boss who's your daddy isn't that a thing? right say isn't my that name say my name game? king <laughs> isn't that a thing as sports sometimes where you give someone like a little like push just like a body check let them know that you're ready to play a physical yeah, in, game in hockey they, they have they have people that that's their only job on the <laughs> ice is to check but he's just like say my say my name king now I mean, jokes aside you explained the educational reasons to do it a few games ago for those of you just joining us there are reasons why you want to put the king on a long diagonal of your bishop it increases Lots of things, chances of blunders, chances of, of tactics. So yeah. we're making fun of it, but there are reasons for it. Definitely. Wow, funny. All right, so can he put his knight on e4? He's got to worry and, about this guy on c5 here. Yeah, he does. And and he's got he's got tactics. He's got queen g5. The g2 pawn yeah. is under fire. There's there's yeah. still reasons for that king. He's got f3, knight g3, showing you right, one of the lines say, he that calculated that when he played bishop h2 you. check. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Bishop H2 check coming back to beat you. Diamond member and easiest to beat in the Chess TV chat. The initial pairings were not random, but you can ask a staff member what rating system we used. I forget. I We used either Fide or Ch I don't remember. but It was some, like, maybe mixed, average, something. I don't know. Yeah, so anyway, but nothing is random. But how many times has Meg Sudlu had to reposition his king to the G file today to like deal with like yeah. <laughs> to deal with <laughs> right? awkward threats? There's one game where he played King G8 like six times, and uh, I mean I think he's looking at King G1 right now. <laughs> yep. Crazy. Um, all right. Well, uh, it is kind of an awkward position for Mog Sudlu. So. Awkward is that time? A minute to play Queen Yeah, again, one. a minute what? there. I'm not pumped about that. And what about Queen B2? Like, Knight D2? Knight C3? Oh, I, I like your Queen B2. I like, like that a lot. A minute of thinking in order to play like a Serana-type blunder? Right? <laughs> Serana-type blunder. You, like, set up the tactic for your opponent. You know what else we have? We also have D4 at some point, and there's just, you know g2 calling my name you've also got knight g5 at some point it feels like there's potential I don't know for tactics i don't know if i've seen parham blunder anything yet today so let's check like queen b2 what would white play it's threatening knight f2 and queen b3 i mean that's pretty juicy yeah i liked it a lot yeah i, I liked i liked queen b2 a lot we can we can go to the bat cave if you want take a take a quick peek at it no, I, I mean you don't need to go in the back cave. I just wonder what you what you thought if you saw anything no, I'm, wrong. I'm with just it. showing it because it was just an obvious move. It hits b3 okay. and f2. I mean, if you play king g1, you lose a piece. How do you deal with it? Yeah, I guess you have knight d2 is like, over, oh, but then knight c3 maybe, and you win the exchange. Right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So okay, I, I'm just saying I. Yeah. I'm just saying I like where you I like where your head's at, buddy. All right. Whoa. Well, I'm gonna point out another tactic then. If pawn takes e4, Serana can take back with his bishop. Before taking the knight on b3, oh, dude, that he'd be was threatening sick. queen h3 with mate, and then he'll recapture on b3. Still have time for it. But look at Mugsulu resourcefully getting his way out of this mess anyway. Yeah. 
again, just these, there's like these little moments in this match, David, right, where these little like desperado moves, awkward little tactics. We saw the Knight takes F2, and here, look at Mogsu that we just stole a pawn, right? I feel like yeah. it's those little, it, call them swindle tactics, right? The swindles have been favoring uh, Mogsulu today. Yeah, I mean, he just took that guy in broad daylight and now yep. ooh, really struggling for Serana here. Hard not to lose the game. Knight on C4 is perfect. Ooh. Oh, yep. Outside no, pass this, is, it's, this backfired for Serana, but I, I think your queen B2 move. I mean, it, it's like, it almost feels like there's a bit of a tilt going on right now, right? Maybe for, so. Uh, for Serana, because queen B2 seemed very straightforward. Um now he's down a pawn in an endgame. Only Mog Sulu can win because not only yeah. is the A pawn already passed, but the C pawn is probably the second weakest one on the board. So, I mean, Black is, Black is in trouble. Yeah, huge trouble. Man. Yeah, missing his chance, and it's slipping away. And officially, this is the last three-minute game. Okay. Uh, giving it. Giving a shout out to the bullet portion coming up. Shout out to the emote only mode going on in Twitch. We got to get that for the chess TV chat at some point too. But uh, loving that. Get your tilt emotes out, right? Because it needs to stop if you're Serana. He might be about to go down five games, which is officially in the uh, hasn't ever happened before territory. But look at this. If he gets a draw, he is still not down five games. We have still seen the, on the likes. correct side of the precipice. Standing right, on he's on the correct precipice. side of the precipice here. He is within striking distance according according to history. Look how quickly he goes for this setup that he just knows is like the easiest to draw here. Yeah. I like that. All right, so this probably threatens rook f6, so he's got to do six, something and then about G5. it. Five. What? Oh my god, uh -oh. he just made that's it mate. himself. Holy that's me. <laughs> and Mexulu knows that's the clinching point. He's like, now you're in the precipice. Oh friend. my god, and we're going to abort the game and let them know that was the last. Oh my gosh. Before we go to break, I got to show what just happened there. Yeah. Yeah, show I was us just the mate. calling. Dude, we were just calling for the draw and saying that it would not be that position. Yeah. And he just walks into me. But the thing is, like, he was already losing here. He already got himself in a horrible position. because he can't he... play G5 himself? I think he can Okay, so if he, if he plays G5 instead, mm -hmm. takes, takes, king of five, this is... I don't know that this is a drawing rook ending, right? Oh, uh, you're right. With the king there. With, with the, with the, tough. So I, I was kind of saying, look how quickly he goes for a draw he knows. But actually, this whole approach of putting the pawn on f6 is kind of unnecessary. I mean, a lot of times, these positions here are perfectly fine. And I was once told by my abusive Russian chess coach that the only way to lose these rook endings is to do something. You just Because okay. I lost that endgame by doing something, and then he yelled at me. It got weird. But anyway, if you just sit tight, everything's supposed to be fine here. But instead, Black kind of made his own little mating net for himself. Yeah, and actually the king was pretty badly placed on h6, so I wonder if like f6 might not be the right square to, to hang out on while you're defending. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, this, this whole thing with f6 and king h6, so... Wow, well, just as we were saying that All striking right. distance remained possible for Serana heading into Bullet, he is officially down five games, which, of course, still possible. We have 30 minutes of the fastest portion ahead, but yeah. uh, the Russian has his work cut out for him. Don't go anywhere when we get back. The last segment will get underway. The Junior Speeches Championship, brought to you by Chess Kid, returns in a moment.
A premium membership at chess.com will help you improve your game with full access to a powerful set of learning tools. Unlimited tactics let you practice like a master with more than 50,000 puzzles to challenge you at every level. Our library of interactive chess lessons created by master coaches will enhance every aspect of your game. And after each game you play, the computer analysis feature will give you feedback on every move you played, turning every game into a chance to learn. And that's not all. Premium benefits also include unlimited tournaments, video lessons, the opening explorer, and much, much more. Upgrade now to take your game to the next level. And that was quite the finish for the 3-1 segment, but we're not going to waste any time. We're about to dive right in here to the bullet and say that uh, these guys, they look like they're having a great time, especially yeah. Parham. Yeah. Um, but even Serana, right? I've never seen anyone have more fun than Parham in a, in a, in a blitz match. Right. Well, he should be having fun because he just got a checkmate that his opponent helped him with to end the 3-1 segment. If you're just joining us, thanks for being here. The bullet section is about to get underway. Uh, Alexi Serrano versus Parham Magsudlu. This is the very, Junior very Speeches it, Championship. Not moving. Yeah, not sure that they're aware. Is, is Alexi aware? Oh, there he goes. Okay. He forgot about his clock. <laughs> Classic Alexi. Now, here's the, here's the Dutch we've been waiting for. LOL. Yeah. Meaning maybe White actually does what he's supposed to do in this one. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I think this first game is going to tell us, Danny. I mean, it is possible to have a streak and come back and bullet here. Right, but uh, I mean, if he doesn't win this game, then then I then I don't see the streak coming. So yeah, if if you don't if you don't start making your move quickly in the bullet portion, there's a reason why these comebacks have never happened. It's partly because, well, you're playing against two opponents in, in this format, both your both your your human opponent, but also that countdown clock. Just like a lot of other sporting formats, racing against the time you have remaining to 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 mount your comeback. Um, and this doesn't look like a great start. Serana still just struggling. He has no answer for, for Parham's Dutch today, David. Yeah. Yeah, Parham playing this very, very confidently and quickly. And uh, I'm surprising to find a small hole in Serana's positional knowledge. You know, I mean... Yeah, it's 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 interesting. And obviously in the post-match interviews, we will ask the players that. I mean, I'm definitely going to make sure that we get get some questions into Parham about you know how he how he kind of moved around in his repertoire, eventually settling on this Dutch, and whether that was any sort of pregame prep or it just seemed to be working. So he did it. Yeah. Very comfortable position for Black here with yep. the F and H bonds to attack, and also if he just wants to hold the position, move back and forth a hundred times. Was, and... This is the opposite of where you want to be, right? If you're if you're trying to mount a comeback because run some clock. Only Black can win, and I, I, don't be surprised if you see another two full minutes go off the total game clock here. Yeah. If not three, I mean. Yeah. He can run this for a long time. And there's just nothing to do other than hope for a repetition, I would say, for Serana here. Yeah. Well, oh, look at this move. E6. Coming in hot with the rook to E5. Mm -hmm. I mean, I Devin, think it's a horrible idea, but expand. he's doing it. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was just saying the pawn just wants to keep going. E7. Yeah. B5. He's, uh, look at Serrani. At, at the very least, from a match perspective, he's um, he understands the practical need to create some counterplay. If he, I would personally think that even losing this game, okay, losing the game is never better than a draw, but you got to do something fast here, and you got to get aggressive. Yeah. Um, okay, now B6 is... Seventh here. It's fine. I don't know why he's thinking. If king c8, then e6 is now but we're playable. b6. And he, oh, I like b6. This is even better. Yeah, wow. Because now, now you've got this rook c7, this weird mating net on on the docket. Yeah. Okay. I mean, e6 was queening the pawn, but I guess mating is even better. Actually, and threatening mate, dude. You were right. e6 and rook f8. Yeah. Look at you inadvertently setting up a mating net. And Serana is going to win the first bullet game, He's I think. Win this game. Whoa. So we were just saying he had no, it was like a horrible strategy for him to even get in a situation like this. But B7 and E7 and yeah. lights out, Buttercup. Nice. You got seven different versions of Bob's Your Uncle, huh? Uh, dude, that was and that was a Buttercup reference, which, of course, Princess Bride, greatest movie of all time. You knew that. Yeah. Um, that movie. For sure. Um, all right, Rook A3 easy, here. 
Easy breezy. Nailed it. Nailed it from a horrible opening. Shout out to the minutes. So wow. Okay, well, he's back within striking distance. If we just forget that he was once down five games and ignore history, then I'll say next point wins. Next point, <laughs> <laughs> next point wins. Shout That's out to why the you don't play in the speed championships anymore, Danny, because they're they don't want you to just say next point wins. I know. Like next point. We were going to do that, like a random, like crazy death match where anything is possible. But shout <laughs> yeah. out to the Chess TV chat who went e emote only mode inadvertently when I called that after the Twitch chat. They're trying to be like Twitch. Chess TV chat's like the little brother of Twitch chat, big brother. Yeah, Chess TV like... looks more like Twitch than Twitch right now. It's very disorienting for me. Very disorienting. I know. Lots of lots of crazy stuff going on. But thanks to everybody who's here. 5,000 of you have been with us on average really today and uh, really appreciate it. A lot of fun as we're getting down to the biggest and best matches here in our first ever Junior Speed Chess Championship. But look at look at Parham, David. Back to E4. Yeah, and we've seen this position before. Last time, Serrano spent a tempo on Rook AC8. Maybe this time, play Bishop F8 without Rook C8. Get a little bit faster to what he wants to do. Oh, there's the B3 move we wondered about. We've seen it few times okay he goes for bishop b2 all right okay now you want to get the d file make d5 hard and uh g6 is probably going to come for black at some oh i said make d5 hard but he's like no not that hard i was going to do it what is but going it, on here but doesn't e5 hang and what is, what is going C2? on here stuff i have no and... idea what's happening yeah, i don't know he can trade, play bishop takes g7, then take on d5. Yeah, There's, he's got uh, forks on e7, yeah. takes on d5. At the end of these lines, we're going to see a forky mode. Rook takes d5 even first. No, he wants to do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah. That can be good when you're talking donuts, not, uh, not you know, racism and sexism and stuff like that. <laughs> the old-fashioned way. <laughs> of course, yeah. You know, I'm I'm I like old fashions. Also, also when you're talking alcoholic beverages, have you ever had one? An alcoholic beverage or no, an old fashioned. No, they're they're great. <laughs> cool. <laughs> anyway, all right, we've got we've got weirdness happening here. Knight of whoa, I thought he was gonna play knight of four and try to take g seven with a fork, but oh duh, it was pinned. My bad. Oh yeah. Just, but look at Serana. Look at that yeah. people on go. Yeah, that B-pawn is going. Whoa, whoa, switch. Whoa. Switch focus. He's got Surprise. F2. Surprise. What about Rook F1? Why is he thinking so long? Is that okay? Rook Bishop F1, D4. Bishop D4? Oh, no. Bad Bishop news there. Bishop F4. I don't think he saw that. I don't think he saw Why didn't he take that F-pawn? Yeah, he should have. I, I, just looking at the, the obvious response, there's no way he saw F4. Blundertown. Yeah. <laughs> he still has some sort of a chance with rook b1 and b2 right i mean it's not like it's not all over yeah if he if he gets the pawn to b2 it's it's a real problem and now white can't take everything on b3 because the knight hangs but i mean to spend a tempo on like bishop e5 back to g7 like that when f2 yeah, is hanging no, I mean, it, it should be working to give up and somehow think still wait rook d1 is still winning the piece rook he could have done it with winning, a check. But he's got even better maybe with rook g1 Oh wow, Rook G one check and he gets you a queen. Just play knight B two. You don't have any choices, friend. Yeah, or or a king H or a king H two or king of three. Just get away from the. There's no universe where this is going to go particularly well for you. Okay, yeah, this is this is going to be a draw. A Nietzsche. Yeah, well, I don't know why he took with the bishop instead of the rook. Like you cannot ever win this. But he wants some weird king G four mating net. I don't. Okay, that was at a no slippage draw <laughs> nice wait he's got a weird does he have a weird check oh no there's no i thought it was a weird trick with rook uh, h2 to g2 rook kind h2, of rook yeah. g2 but look at parham's <sighs> sneakiness there with rook g2 i feel like he almost gave himself a little in, inside smile like an inside joke yeah that was All pretty right. funny it's a four point game oh man oh man well, I've seen this thing before. I've actually seen this weird queen's I've, gambit. I've never seen before. anything like this. All right, what is it now? Knight b4. Knight b4. You're heading in for d5. We have a four-game lead. Obviously, yeah. if you're just joining us, you can see it. It's at some point was five for Parham Sulu, but 
We've had one win for Serana and one draw in the bullet portion. Yeah. 21 minutes left. Yeah. So down a pawn, good bishop on b7. Some funky weaknesses for both players here and there. Hmm. A5, maybe. Well, I, I want to do something like take f3 and put the queen on d5. No. No. Hmm. He wants the knight on d5. Okay. Nothing wrong with knight d5, I guess. Head back to b6, gain more space with a4, maybe. I, I'm really unfamiliar with this stuff, so it's all kind of guesswork here. May oh, yeah. He was maybe preparing knight g5, so black says, mm -hmm. no, thank you. No yeah, weird good call. tactics. Good call. He would not have enjoyed knight, D, knight g5. So. Knight c5 now. You Ooh. can't take because there'll be a discovery on the queen and winning the knight on b6. Yeah, that Takes would b3, pretty Bishop good c6. Too. There's rook a3 coming. Oh, tactics. c6 is undefended. Serana. Yeah, so is b3. So it's not... Yeah, it's it's not super not clear. Decisive, is it? I mean, he's down upon this whole time. D5. So that is... He's threatening bishop takes b6. If knight takes d5, there's queen takes e6. Yeah. Yep. Just trying to get Whoa, in there. Knight can h4, no. Bishop, no. H6? bishop yes. takes h6. He can. Or at least he thinks he can. He can, and he does. And He's all d in on this attack. Knight d4 to f5? Knight d4 to f5 looks good. Oh, he said knight rook, d4 to e6 rook d3 is, is just as well. winning. I think, he, I think he missed knight d4 to e6. Oh, yeah. Rook d4 think, was I not mean, I'm 100% sure that he did, but it doesn't matter. It's still That's winning. That's a pretty good threat, though, too. Yeah. <laughs> that'll work. As they say, <laughs> that'll do. Whoa, and guess what? Two decisive games for Serana and Bullet, and we have yeah. a match, ladies and gentlemen. Three games is all it takes to tie this thing up. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even realize Serana was white. It's going so fast. I was like, that's it. Param finished the match. But no, that was Serana with another one of his crazy peace sacks. Yeah. No, this is uh this is a this is a match right here and look at both sides now with well over a minute they're doing their their best Hikaru impersonation. For a positional that player, he's quite aggressive, Danny. I mean, he's pretty yeah. free with some of these sacks. For sure. We see those crazy dancing heads on our graph. Love that. Who knows who's going to win, right? Now I'm just like looking at positions like this. I'm like knight takes c6, bishop e7. Yeah, no, you just like <laughs> he's giving you delusions of 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 sacrificial grandeur here. Yeah. Oh, look at that square. I guess knight, knight d7. On C5. Some That's where I want it. That's where I like it. Knight on c5. Knight a5. Okay, Parham's about to strike back. This is, there's this focus. Is sick. That, I mean, you can't survive that many blows in one game, can you? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, right now, I think he's probably trying to think of some creative way to sacrifice the exchange. Yeah, that's what they usually do, just give up the exchange. Here comes C6 falling, and then E7 is a target after that. This just looks like, whoa, plays E4, which also seems pretty good. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Take on C6. Here oh comes D5. Goodness. I think this is just over. The Serana might even just murder. resign this position. Yeah. Get on with the next one. Ow. No, he's not, he's not Ow. resigning. He's making moves, but at some point, I think we're going to see but Knight C7. is just whenever he wants. <laughs> yeah, I... I I, <gasps> so Serrano played a lot more games out or longer than he should earlier in the match, but now, yeah. now there's not enough time to do that in bullets. So he shakes no. his head, as he should, and moves on. Yeah, I don't even have time to check out their expressions anymore. It's like the pieces are moving so fast. All right, we're back to this. Uh, back to the stone wall. No, we got a new one. We got Ooh, a new a contender Lenigrad. in the Dutch. Yeah, Leningrad. I didn't even notice we had a Leningrad's we had a Fianchetto kingside, and Leningrad defined by the G6 Fianchetto versus the the closed pawn structure we had been seeing for Black. For those maybe, wondering, maybe a brain slip instead of a mouse slip. Where like he he should have just played the, the stone wall. Yeah, I mean the I don't know why he's mixing it up. The stone wall's been going so well, but yeah. apparently he. Wants to have a little bit of fun right now. There's 16 minutes left. He has a four-game lead. Yeah. Not mathematically impossible to get a comeback, but, you know, the 1-1 one, one mm. difference in terms of having the increment makes it so that it's it's much more real chess than than other bullet is. Some people say it's fake bullet, or you could say it's 
it's more real chess, right? Because you get a lot more games decided by by the moves on the board, not just flagging somebody ruthlessly. So, um, Well, there was I, a big positional mistake with the bishop surrender on e5. I think he may have thought he was damaging the structure and not noticed the bishop on g7 because... I, I agree. And again, Black is doing well. And that was kind of my point. Like, if he doesn't solve his chess problems here, the increment yeah. is is taking a lot more time off the off the total speed chess clock. So... Mm -hmm. Again, like you've got, you've got to, you've got to make good moves here and do them quickly. You're running out of time. H three, Bishop H three. I don't know. I mean, you got to do something, right? It's not. Yeah, do it. You can't leave that bishop on G two and play the game. King G two and then Rook H one. Ooh, now who's got the H file? Queen D two is good, fighting for a dark square, but Rook F four won't let him. He's gonna double Rooks nice. with Rook H three and Rook B to H one. If I had to yeah. guess. Black can play with like H5. You can still play Queen G5 and then even sack on G3. Oh, but he does also have the B pawn, so he can sort of try and oh, catch yeah. napping Actually, on both sides a, of the board. That's a good point. Bury the B pawn. Yeah, that's why Black's afraid to play Rook F8 at the wrong moment because like Queen A5, B6, and suddenly, oops, other side. So we'll see. Queen C2. I think he really liked your idea of the V pawn. That's why he's he didn't abandon it. Yeah, and he could take the G six pawn, but but he goes for this. I think this was a smarter idea. I, I like that he's using both sides of the board. Yeah. Queen H two. Wow, threatening H seven. But what if you just play H five? Now you've got yeah, discoveries with the queen on H two. Oh no! Whoa. What in Bishop the world? C8. Rook B four is threatening the queen and the rook on B one. Yeah, I I don't think Queen G one. He takes it because he's gonna he, after the rook moves. The Queen G one mate. Oh my! Nobody can take H two. Oh, Queen G one mate. Duh. Yeah. I Duh. was looking at Queen C one. <laughs> oh my! What just happened there? Serrano just. I kinda, don't know, but farms up five games. So that's that's a huge win and 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 a borderline I, nail in the coffin at this point. That was. I, I think actually had his his chance there, you know, as you say what what was there. I mean, Serana probably I mean that's kind of how it goes sometimes with bullet games. It's like you were both winning at some point, right? And yeah. one of you didn't. But, but you, I feel like at the some queen... point that game he was probably winning. Yeah. And as soon as you let the there. queen went to H two, you start like thinking like that just doesn't it doesn't bode well. You look at the tactics and that's why yeah. Karpov said don't don't put your pieces on, on pre squares, right? Because even if there's not a tactic now, at some point there might be. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we've got a five-point lead for the yeah. Iranian here, and he's uh, he's looking to join his countrymen in the semifinals. He is yeah. on his way right now. Probably down to about that many games left. So five games left total. Yeah, I, I would. I mean, you you're kind of guessing based on the time, but right. No, it's a that's a safe a safe prediction, I think. Um, and so that means we're basically in must-win territory here, you know. Serana got himself in the corner. Nobody puts yeah. Serana in the corner. He's got to get himself out. Yeah, throw everything at this uh, queenside corner. Yeah, a lot it's of pieces in that queenside corner there. Uh, pretty nice right now. But, okay, this looks good for Serana. Yeah, I mean, take, put a bishop on c3. Ooh. What? That's not where we expected that to go, huh? Yeah, I I thought we'd keep it on the board, but instead he. Yeah. I I, I don't I don't know that that was that was ideal. Rook a one, rook b one, dance, dance, dance. Parham wants more. Okay, king g seven. You can play for this knight e eight, knight d six. Try to maneuver your piece of the king side. Black does have a bind, and a four is. Wait, a4 is actually hanging now. A4 is quite weak at the moment. Queen b4. Okay, so... Rook b7? That'll deal with that. Now black is going to get the open file. And, and, okay, bishop c2 guards it. I, I felt like maybe he yeah. could have just gone for rook c8 first rather than what he did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The open file might have been more important than, uh, than the knight's position there, but okay. This seems now holdable. Rook b6 check would have helped him hold it too, but... Okay, ninety six, but we're in we're in must win territory if if you're Serana right now, and that's not boding yeah. well for what looks to be happening. 
Rook C3 might have been interesting there. Maybe just Bishop C4. Yeah, it doesn't uh, really. Yeah. But okay, this pokes in both the H4 pawn and the F pawn via these backdoor checks. Now you can just play Knight C5. Yeah. He takes it. Ooh, I don't like that. Why allow Rook takes a 5? I thought Knight C5. Now now this Rook ending I don't think is, is going no. to do anything but give White winning chances. And this is, yeah. this Ooh, is getting E5. close to being it. Nasty. Nasty. And Look Parham. at that king activation. Parham. He's bobbing his That's head. It. Parham That's happy. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Rook takes H5. In the center. What's Rook he saying? Four, I never know what he's saying over there. I know? know. We really need a lip reader in here, Danny, for his next match. I feel like if he was speaking final. English, maybe. It looks pretty certain that he's got a semifinal. First, you got to guess the language. Then you got to get a lip reader. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But he's got a lot to say. Yeah, he's got a lot to say. He's... Well, there's about to be less than 10 minutes on the clock. Look at him kind of milking it. I feel like he's doing that on purpose. He kind of knows that the more time goes off the clock... Better. Oh, look at that. Setting up a little mate a little mate trick. Serana not looking so happy over there. No. It's like he's he's understood his fate. This is his last, his last match. Yep. I mean, we could, we could easily lose two more minutes in this game. Like with the yeah. increment and them actually converting this, you know, with, with solid rook ending technique if Magsudlu goes on to win. Yeah. So, I mean, your last chance in these situations is just to resign and then hope you can rattle off some quick wins and shake your your opponent's nerves, but don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. King D6. It's a it's a Lucina position. All right. And who's that? Another pop singer? <laughs> LOL. LOL, you crack me up. <laughs> Actually, look, did he just get a draw? His king's on the short side, rook on the he long side. He got the rook to the long side. No! Yeah, he actually just kind of... Oh, no, but it's still going to be losing. The rook is not ideally placed. Now you have the king comes up with tempo, I think. And then... Okay, no, I, I think I think king d6 check, and then e7. I should know this rook ending. Yeah, we should know this. On it, and I feel like I'm forgetting it, but no, no, this is this is not the way to do it. You have to play rook b7. No, this was okay. He holds the draw, but this was winning. Mike rook b7. Doesn't look happy about that. Rook b7, like king g6, just king d7. Oh no, king king d6 was winning there. Wow. Okay. Well, then how is it, Black supposed to defend it? I mean, he did have his rook on the long side on the a file. Yeah, but. uh <laughs> yeah, let's analyze it. <laughs> we got 5,000 people in chat. Danny, at 2,500 of them think that it was winning, and 2,500 think it was a draw. Nobody really knows. So if rook b7, which was what we had, and yeah. the king moves... This is a, okay, this position we had several times in the game. Hey, this bishop's coming to h7 and f5 again. <laughs> now, now you play king d6. <sighs> and even though it's the long side, it's not the longest long side. I know that sounds weird, but it's true, but it's not the longest long side because it's not, it, it's, uh, it's no, not. I, I just can't get over the fact that he didn't check on H7 first. In which position? <laughs> In the old Queen's Gambit position. He played Bishop oh, oh, F5 you're without about the Bishop H7. Game. Sorry, I was talking about this one, yeah. I know. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the point is, in this in this situation, you're, you're able to move the king out. Mm-hmm. And if the king steps forward, you're able to give this check and then come down. But maybe I'm wrong. Actually, was this? Now, I, now I got to analyze this game all day. <laughs> well, that's Danny's. That's Danny's Thursday. Yeah, that's my. Th there goes my Thursday. You know, um, queen c8. Better yeah, come back. No king, king f6. Seven. And the reason why this doesn't work, everybody, is if you come down now, black does have <gasps> the long side. Queen b7, rookie one. Evil. Pure evil. All right, back to the live game. I'm exhausted. <laughs> we'll figure that out. We've got out all later. day to figure out that rook end game. We're gonna somebody's uh, somebody's looking it up in the table base right now and then it's gonna pawn it off as it's their own knowledge, like that guy in Goodwill Hunting, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who comes in and then and then Matt Damon's like, How you like them apples? You uh -huh. know? But so someone's saying... looking up the table base, about to pawn it off. 
So you're saying it's this saying, game has something to do with apples. You're going to be in here regurgitating Gordon Wood, talking about how, you know, anyway. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I think we're about to call it, David. That is yeah. going to be it. We're going to see Parham Mugsu the move on. Less yeah. than six minutes remain. Not possible yeah. anymore. So that's two Iranians in the semifinals. This tournament is down to 50% Iranians. Well, and it's it's a huge That's win. Awesome. I mean, for uh, you know, Iran is a country. I mean, you're. I don't know if you you saw. There was a, a really great feature piece in New and Chess this month um, about obviously you know at some point not more than a decade ago, chess was banned in Iran, right? Um, yeah. And uh, so the fact that it's a it's changed um, from from you know the the previous sort of police state and the restrictions that were on games like chess. Now the fact that it's a game that everybody can play is uh, is obviously leading to quite the boom of chess in their country. You've got these two amazing juniors, Parham Magsudlu, Ali Reza, Firu Ali Reza Firuja. And yeah. uh, anyway, there was a really great article, anybody that gets new in chess magazine, talking about con talking about the, uh, the the lifted ban of chess in Iran. So Yeah, I mean, Iran's in an incredible position right now in terms Maybe of Maybe not 10 years ago then. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe uh, how, how long? Not. When was chess banned? Outsider one zero zero one. It was banned in Iran, right? Yeah. So So they've got they've got two of the top five juniors in the world right now. There's there's no other yep. country like that. And yep. you know, you see their Olympiad team and it's like a hundred percent teenagers, and you're like, Well, this country's gonna be really strong in five years. It was forty years ago. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Still a, a thriving chess culture and something that's pretty pretty amazing to see happening because, as David said, right, no other countries can boast two of the top five top juniors in the world. So, yeah. Man. Well. Mexudu can even say that he pushed Serana off of the night orf. That's – I mean, maybe it's just because the match is decided. So he's just playing whatever. doesn't matter. No need to use his, his prep anymore. Yep. No reason to go for his main opening, but at this point, I think his body language, you can tell he, he knows it's over. The ban was lifted in 1988. Okay. There you go. Nice. Loving the facts. Nice. Right around the time you learned the moves of the game. Okay, so White was winning in that last game until move 75, king e7. So someone just brought me that table-based knowledge. Should yeah. have checked the king away with rook g1. Okay, thank you. So how about rook d1 here? Oh, yeah, rook f1's even simpler. Yeah, good enough. Either way, Serana comes out ahead. All right. Pieces of pieces, they say. That's good. They do say that still. A piece is a piece. They do, yeah. That's it's a thing. That's yeah. one that's unlikely to change because it's, I mean, it's pretty simple, honestly. So, Serana's like, going to get a win. It's like, what else did you think a piece was? You know, when I go to pizza shops that uh, are by the slice, and I ask, yeah. "Well, how big is the slice?" They say, "A piece is a piece, man." That's, that's a, right. piece a piece is a piece, man. There you go, right? There you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> a piece is a piece, right? Deal with it. So, pizza by the slice, chess pieces by the piece. Look at that queen d3 doing yeah. work. Serana's not gonna lose every game to end this match. That is yeah. confirmed. Yeah. Um. And we get our pizza emotes out. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up that rook ending on the uh, the bat cave if that's okay while this while this game rages on because I, <laughs> sure. I got I gotta sh I gotta get it in my own head. Yeah, it's a tougher end game. Than oh wait, this it's one too here, late. So. Never mind. No, let's go back. Sorry, it, I already the game's already gone. I yeah. get really frustrated when I never mind. I'm not when happy you don't right know now. something that you used to know. Yeah. So yeah. You, I know you ever have that. I mean, it's not just because I'm getting old, David. It's also because I suck at chess. It's two things. It's because well, I'm getting I mean, old and because I suck at chess. A lot of time, it's because you spend a lot of time writing jokes. Right. I mean, clearly, I mean, that career seems to be thriving. Yeah. <laughs> so That's fair. Uh, That's fair. Yeah, that's right. So sometimes you got to target the front row. Any good comedian knows that. Um <laughs> But uh, anyway, no, I, I it, it is painful sometimes when I look at chess positions in my brain. There's like, I'm trying to see through the dancing monkey, and it just keeps going in my head. I'm like, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. You've All done right, enough. Well, congr congratulations um, to Mogsudlu either way. We are going to have both these guys in an interview, so don't go anywhere. 
there's yeah. going to be some some interesting discussion here, I think, with these guys and, and get their thoughts on how this match went down. So, Yeah, except for me, I will sadly be going back to my, my normal programming. And, uh, yes, I'll, and I'll a huge, to... huge thank you. Uh, yeah. Those who don't know, David filled in at the very last minute today due to a scheduling snafu. My fault. I'll be relying on... I'll be relying on VODs to see what, what they have to say for themselves. Yep. And uh, anyway, but you were awesome. I saw a lot of people saying, I really like David's commentary in the chat. They said it just like that. I really like David's commentary in the chat. Was that so, you with five different handles, Danny? Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> no, but seriously, thank you for doing this. And David even found a babysitter for his son, Lupin, at the last second. Hope yeah. I can say that. But you did. Yeah. Um, is that Lupin mm -hmm. I already hear in the background? Yeah, yeah, he's already, he's he's back. already back here. I had to patch back. it together, man. Yep. Um, but uh, Danny, before I go, I want to draw your attention to one other cool thing that I saw today from Parham, which okay. is his icon. Did you guys already talk about this in his first match? His user icon here on chess.com? No, we didn't. Well, it says, I need new haters. So, so people I need in the chat new haters. want you to hate on him. I love that. Need new haters. The old ones became my fans. So. The old ones became my fans. That's a great. That's a great image. It, yeah. it tends to work the opposite with me. Most of my fans have become my haters. Have become your okay, haters. Like at least somebody's trending the right direction in life. Yeah. Right. Like you've got the opposite not problem of me. Yeah. Moxulu's haters have become his fans. That's amazing. I'm yeah. gonna ask him about that. There you go. Yeah. Ask him. If he needs help finding haters, you could probably give him a pointer or two, right? I mean, I could. Chest, I could give him a pointer or two. It'd make a bad chess joke here. Much help, but uh, something you know, misquote when chess was banned in a country there, right? You know, and then butcher a song, and you've literally got yourself a thousand haters on social media. Yeah. So, so that could be perfect. The two of you could be unstoppable <laughs> together. <laughs> All right. Well, time is up. This will officially be the last game. This has been a great. A great uh, show today. Honestly, this was a lot of fun. I feel like the match was closer than this final score is going to show us, but I guess we yeah. say that a lot. Ultimately, uh, Parham Maksudlu. I, mean, I mean, I think was, that's partly because, like, Serana had better positions than his score because where Maksudlu yes. was better than him was partly these little tactics, these yeah, little tricks, swindles, often from bad positions. So, you know, he, he – but that's part of what the differential in strength was, you know, like yep. – Serana couldn't have played three and a half hours of like blitz with Parham without making some mistakes exactly, here. Yeah. There, you know, I don't think it was yep. bad form or anything. It's just, you know, most people yep. make some mistakes here and there, and uh, Maxudlu did not make many. But yeah, and and I think you said it really well. I mean, he just it, you call him swindles or not, he was more resourceful in in some of those critical moments and finding tricky tricky little tactics that. Um, ultimately won him won him a lot of games not going to win him his this last game here he's about to not this last one no about to bring it to a close this last game's worth about 45 bucks maybe right so nice. there you go not bad not bad not bad and well and, played by uh, serana you know he showed that he could still trade punches all the way to the end i think uh he entered the bullet section down four and ended it down four so he tied the bullet segment that's not it's not bad totally stayed yep. in there well, uh, he uh, gives us a smile. Parham does as well. We know the players will be rejoining us in the call here in just a moment. David, I'm going to say goodbye to you a little earlier than we normally do to my co-host, but thank you again so much, everybody. If you can golf clap alone in your, in your, you know, in your living room right now, naked on your beanbag chair, eating Cheetos, yeah. give David a golf clap. Thank you, um, Danny. Thanks for, thanks for calling on me and being uh, flexible with this. And uh, I see the players in chat. Wishing each, you know, telling each other good game and the politeness continues. So good sportsmanship from them. And I also, you know, tell them thanks for me too. I really enjoyed uh what they what they brought today. Great I will, game. buddy. All right, man. Enjoy, enjoy the kids, and we will return in just a few moments, everybody, with interviews. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
So we are now joined. I believe we are now joined by our by our two players, Alexi Serana and Parham Magsulu. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Well, thank you both for being here. Thank you for what was a, a uh, exciting match. To start out with, we had a record set by the two of you with Black winning the first six games in the match. Uh, was this was this something you guys agreed to do beforehand? <laughs> Alexi? No, it just happened because uh, white openings was bad. So. And uh, Parham, you, you then went away from your King's Indian attack and, and went to E4, challenging Alexei's uh, Nidorf, where you actually got your first win as white. Is this, um, are you done now with the King's Indian attack? You're not going to play that anymore? Okay, I, I think he prepared more in this uh, King's Indian attack, and I was not ready, so, okay, um, I was also didn't check his game, even one game. <laughs> so, I played the E4 and hoped to s somehow surprise him in Nidorf, but... Yeah, this King's Indian uh, uh, goes very wrong for me. Yeah. Well, uh, Alexei, is that true? Did you, did you have something prepared for his King's Indian attack? Because it definitely seemed that way. Yes, I prepare in the King attack. Yes, I, I believe that Parham will play B5, B5 in the King's relations. But he play Rook S7, Bishop E7, not B5. Which he played versus Andrei Spenka, and this is wrong variation. Well, it it seems like both of you guys did a little bit of preparation. I I know I've asked specifically, uh, Alexei, if you prepared for black against the the King's Indian attack. But other than that, did you prepare for any other openings against Parham? And obviously, I have to ask, did you prepare for the Stonewall Dutch? Because it seemed like once he switched to that, you had a hard time dealing with the Stonewall. No, I, I didn't prepare a dash. I thought I had a very good position all time in the dash, but then Parham just played better, better than me and won me. Parham, did you have did you have a, a, an idea to, to kind of poke around and try different things with Black, or, or did you have an idea that you would play the Stonewall Dutch before the match? Okay, uh, as uh, as usual, I'm playing so much theories. So, uh, okay, I have many kind of theories with black versus d4 and also e4. So, okay, yeah, when you have many options, you can try uh, many of them. And I think this f5, I had good feeling on this. And uh, yeah, both uh, also uh, Leningrad and Stonewall, I was okay for both. And I think yeah, yeah, uh, it was very big pressure. Um, when I was starting attacking in uh, uh, Stonewall, yeah, when I push f5, h5, h4, yeah, this is very big pressure on him. And also in uh, a6, Queen's Gambit, uh, I had game with uh, Esipenko that I played very bad. And okay, also this b5 is not good move. And yeah, I knew that and I played uh, more solid uh, than b5. Yeah, because b5, there's some idea to take on uh, f6 and take on d5 and some uh, advantage for white. So, yeah, I I, I think I played uh, better than that game. Alexi, you, you smiled when Parham mentioned that game. Did you did you know of this game from your countryman, Esipenko? Was, were you aware yeah, of that game? Of I prepared this relation and believe that Parham will play this. But Parham knows too. Yeah. yeah. Well, Parham, uh, you seem to be having a good time, especially when the games were going your way. You were you were bobbing your head, bouncing your head, and you were singing a little bit. It seemed with you were moving your mouth a lot. Were you singing lyrics, or and if so, what music were you listening to? Yeah, it was some uh, I Iranian rapper. Uh, uh, his name is Hishkat. Called it. And uh, yeah, I like him so much, and yeah, he gives me so much motivation when I listening to him. So yeah, it was nice for me, and yeah, I was so happy today, and uh, it was very good feeling. Ali Reza was also listening, I think, to the same Iranian rapper. Seems seems popular there. Um, Alexi, you also have uh, you got headphones on. What were you listening to music, and if so, what would uh, what was your choice? 
about music. Were no, you listening I, to any music? Um, I listen not uh, hip hop. I listen more pop and pop and rock. Who's who's the who's the Russian pop star you listen to these days? What's your what's who's your favorite? Oh, uh, I I listen not Russian. I listen English. English. So like you got some T Swift rocking, maybe some Justin Bieber. Uh, yes, Justin Bieber is <laughs> a little bit okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, the uh, the fans always like to know. It's always a point of discussion and uh, something that is fun for them to get to know you guys a little bit better. But um, well, uh, obviously this um, this match didn't quite go your way in the end, uh, Alexi. You uh, you didn't you didn't move on. So so obviously uh, that that's not not your favorite choice. But where where do you think it, it got away from you overall? Is it is it just those those streaks that Parham got on? He won four games in a row. And and were you tilting a little bit? Did you have trouble finding yourself? Or if you had to say overall, what was the what was the reason you lost this match? Yes, I, I thought I have a good, good position in, in all games, but I lost all these four games. And of course, I was so tilted, but I understand that I m must play next. And in this moment, I understand that I obviously lose match. Yeah. So I didn't believe that I can come back, but I want to end. This match not so bad. Is that is that something you think Parham does exceptionally well? Because uh, David and I agreed, we felt like you had a lot of good positions. Maybe maybe you were better out of the opening in the middle game in in most games, but it seemed like he just found all kinds of little tactical tricks, little swindles that you didn't anticipate. Is that is that something you feel like he does really well, just finding those tactical swindles? <laughs> Sorry, Alexi, that question was for you. Do you think that's something that Parham does really well, to find those tricks even when you were in a better position? Yes. Of, I, I thought that Parham was better in tactics. In tactics. So I, I play normal, but I did many mistakes uh, in, in calculation. Yep. So positionally, I play normal, but in tactics, I was slightly worse. Yeah. Parham? That part of your part of your feeling of just uh, having a lot of experience online blitz and bullet, you feel like you see those tactics really well, and and you're always looking for them. You're playing very resourceful chess, even if you're in a worse position. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I, I I'm just trying so much not to lose uh, losing position, and uh, okay, the best way to defending the positions, and uh, also uh, I think uh, I was uh, in good mood of. Ca calculating everything and okay, I think I didn't miss a lot of tricks or a lot of tactics and uh, I saw many of them so I was happy with myself today and uh, also uh, I should think uh, to do something about my bullet uh, so because uh, uh, my opponent gave a uh, lot of points from this bullet when it came and yeah, I should do something to improve myself in this setup. Well, you'll have time to work on your blitz. And, and on that note, let's talk about um, who you'll be facing in the next round. On Tuesday, obviously, we have our next and our last quarterfinal match between Jeffrey Zhang and Benjamin Gladura. So let me ask you, if you're uh, taking a look at that matchup, who do you see as the favorite, Parham, uh, between Jeffrey and Benjamin, and who would you rather face? Okay, I think... Uh... They don't have so much different, and uh, uh, hey, maybe uh, Jeffrey have a little bit more, uh, much better openings, but also uh, Benjamin Geladura is a very solid, and uh, he, he have very nice uh, uh, vein to play his lines, and yeah, he, he knows his theories well, so I think it's, uh, it will be a very tough match, and okay, uh, I, it's not uh, important for me to play this home, and yeah, everybody is okay for me. Okay, I will play, uh, and I will hope uh, to uh, do my best. Okay. 
Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you one more question, Alexi. As as you uh, move move out from the Junior Speech Chess Championship, you look at the remaining players. Who do you see as the favorite to win it all of all of everybody that's remaining? Who do you who you believe is the uh, has the best chances to win the whole thing? Uh, I don't know, but I I think Parham has <laughs> is um, very good chances to win. Or Alireza Firuza, I think this. Is, from them one will win this event okay well there you go good good answer there good choice and uh anyway but seriously you guys this was a lot of fun um and uh thank you thank you so much for for playing a great match and for and for being good sports here in, in our interviews and uh obviously parham congratulations again we wish you the best of thank luck you. in the next round and alexi thank you. thank you for playing and hopefully we'll see you next year thank you bye guys okay goodbye bye. And all right, as our players leave us here, we take a look at the bracket, everybody. Thank you to all those of you who remain. About 3,000 of you with us. This has been a pretty fun day, but there you have it. Parha Magsulu moves on over Alexi Serrana, waiting in the semifinals for the winner of Jeffrey Zhang versus Benjamin Gladura, the three versus six matchup, which will be next Tuesday. So make sure you mark your calendars for that. And uh, interesting comments there from uh, Alexi Serrano kind of saying he sees somebody from Iran winning the whole thing, Ali Reza Faruja or Parham Magsuda. That would be quite the matchup in the final if we actually had an all-Iran junior speech chess championship. But I think Wei Yi has something to say about that. We'll see if Jeffrey Zhang or Benji Gladura have something to say about it as well. Of course, that match is going down at 11 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, July 16th. Be there. Um, I don't think I'm supposed to say or be square anymore. I don't even know what that even meant anymore. It's it's a thing that people I saw in some like video, movies like Stand by Me or something. I don't know. Long time. <sighs> Thanks for staying with us all day, everybody. It's been it's been quite a day. Um, appreciate all of our moderators, all of the support that we have from the staff behind the scenes, doing what they can to help make this well. Shout out to Aaron here in the studio C, putting up with me as usual. Um, and uh, thank you to. Everybody helping to make this possible. The Junior Speeches Championship continues on Tuesday, July 16th. We will see you then. Danny Wrench signing off. Peace out. This probably threatens Rook F6, so he's got to do something and then about G5. it. Five. What? Oh my God, uh -oh. he just made That's it himself. Mate. That's me. <laughs> And Max Sulu knows that's the clinching point. He's like, now you're in the precipice. Oh friend. my god.